and most of it is what somebody told you that it's money people that sell their soul for the devil to the devil and get money and, right <laughs> well it's really not what it is but I do understand I do understand that, uh, the perceptions because you hear it on on videos people talking about Beyonce and Jay Z and all of the so-called singers are Illuminati and they sold their soul to the devil and they got money. Yeah. Well, they say that, but that's not true. Does it mean that people don't do things negatively to get fiat? No, not necessarily. Yeah, but I'm just saying what, what you want to do is you want it to get to the point of understanding things the same way that you just said, two and two is four? You said it quickly, didn't you? And you said it based on the science, didn't you? And no one disagreed, did you? Now, this is what happens in the real world. Uh, we have the unfortunate situation where you all are targets, even at a young age. You may feel it, and you may not look at it the same way we look at it as adults, right? And um, the reason why each one of you give, give different answers in psychology that call, that's called scattered minds. And uh, when they present information, you know what a symbolographer is? I heard of it. Yeah. What do you think? What do you know if you heard of it? Symbolia, listen, symboliographer. And, and it's related to the science of symboliography. Do you have an idea? All right. You, what is symboliography? What is symboliographers? All right, good. That's good. If you don't know, don't start making your stuff. Get in that habit now, right? Right? Say, um, I don't know at this time. I'll do some research and I'll come back at you. I think um, sciences are studying different cultures. All right. But they make technology and electric and stuff. All right. All right. Symboliography and symboliographer. Symbolic, symboliography, symbol, just like symbol. Mm -hmm. Symboliography is the art, the cunning, cunning of drafting documents mm -hmm. and also altering documents, wills, instruments, ETC, like that, right? Mm -hmm. A symboliographer is one who's trained to do that. The reason oh, why every one, to, every, one, every one of you gave different answers is because unbeknownst to you, like many of our people, you have been, uh, you might say, victimized by symboliographers. The job of symboliographers is to create paradigms and present it in society for social controls. Yeah. If you, um, just like if you go to school for any particular discipline, right? You go to school to get a discipline, and if you're dealing with facts, it's the same principle all around the world, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just like meaning that if you learn to use a hammer, right, and you're hammering a nail, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in China, do you do like this, or do you hammer a nail like this? Mm -hmm. All right, if somebody do it like this and say that they're hammering, you would recognize that they, uh, something's wrong, right? Yes. Well, guess what? True religion is the same way, just like the math. The science and the disciplines that are given to people in the way of education have a universal character. They're principles. They work on principles. One of the things that damages our people is that they've been given beliefs instead of facts. So what that does, and look at you all growing up, right? In just a few more years, you're going to have to start taking responsibility and help your mom and dad. Right now, they're helping you, right? Mm -hmm. And that's going to be your first duties, your dad, your mom, your sister, etc., your family, before you go on your own, right? It will take long. Right now, you plan. You're running on your bike and everything, but only a couple years. Me and my sisters, we take care of them. Good. I'm glad you got that. I just, it's just us and our mom. But think of this. Think of this. Think of this. Here we are, you're all friends, so we can say we're your family, right? Mm -hmm. Now, two and two is four, each one of you agree. As your religion is, each one of you gave a different answer. And you have an opinion about Illuminati on assumptions 
or something that someone told you, and even then, each one of you had a different answer. Now, don't consider me whatsoever. Just look at each other. And you're together, and every one of your answers were contradictory to each other. Can there be harmony with you? Yes. No, it cannot be. That's what the Oh, not being too well together, except they love be agree. So you all see things different on the same subject, is what I'm saying. Oh, no. Do you understand? Yeah. Now, so the first thing that you would think about is that if you're not strangers to each other and you don't agree, then everybody can't be right. And most likely, not necessarily all of your opinions would possibly be incorrect. And then you would think about it, and how would you, what would you do to determine whether or not you were correct? Research. What is research? Like, see how long the answers Well, no, that's what you, that would be an action after you start research. What would you do to research it? This is what you would do. This is what you would do. Whenever you're dealing with any discipline, what you would do is you would research that discipline. If you want to look up McDonald's, right? Mm -hmm. You're familiar with them and you're familiar with their sign, right? Yes. But if you weren't looking at a building or going to a place, you would look it up in a library or on the internet or something like that, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. All right, now do you know who started what you think is Illuminati? Um, no. Well, for instance, um, I'm trying to say the KKK or the. Um, yeah, again. Um, I forgot what I heard of it. It's, it's, it's very much from what it's going to do. That's all right. But well, just think about it. Just think about it. Just think, if we were filming you right now, and we actually are. <laughs> if we were filming you and gave that back to you, and then you begin to study, and then you would recognize your answer not only is incorrect, but you're guessing. And what you don't want to do is go into life, particularly at your age, start guessing things, all right? Mm -hmm. There's rules to learning. Mm -hmm. You know what the rules are? When there's something, when there's a word that you don't know, you research the word, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with discipline. Now, what you're going to find out? You ever heard? You ever uh, heard in Bible? Because you said you said that your mom's a Christian, right? Mm -hmm. Did you um, ever hear about the section when they talked about Jesus getting ready to walk the water? Yes. And they talked about that he became illuminated. And mm -hmm. you would not mm -hmm. be with that's Illuminati. Do you know what that represents? Mm -hmm. Illuminati represents the activation of your pineal gland. You ever heard of that? Third eye. My grandma, my grandma, she, she, uh, well, it's actually me and my cousin, grandma, uh, she, she got a picture of God walking on water with some sticks and, and stuff, and he is holding a body. Yes, and that's symbolic. Now, when you see the symbol of Jesus walking water, mm -hmm. and then the Bible talks about he becomes illuminated, but it, what that really means is the activation of the chakras, or what you call ascended. And when they're ascended, that means you reach the sun, or that you come as bright as the sun, so then no one can look into his face, but that's symbolic. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that you should know because most of the people who start calling it the devil, if it was the devil, they'd have to start calling Jesus the devil. It's a, it's a switcher route. It's a reverse. Do you, well, do you understand? I'm giving you a reference point so that you can so that you can recognize that you have a misrepresented body of information. You you're making assumptions, meaning that somebody said something, you accepted it without examination, and which or most someone had said something about you. Yeah, yeah, and people assume it to be true. Now, if they really believed it to be true, right, right, they would have to say that Jesus is the devil because he's the not. What that means is that you become enlightened. You know what the word enlightened means? 
enlightenment represents that you've been gaining knowledge or you became conscious of something. That's enlightenment. At any rate, cutting through the chase, this is what it is. Illuminati. Are we Christians? <laughs> he asked if we're Christians. Yes, we are that too. But you need to know what it is. See, you know what Christian means? You know what Christian means? Is? Um, I'm just, I'm telling you, no, I need, I need everything. No, we're not. I'm not saying, I need no, you know, see, I'm happy that you're asking questions. I'm excited yeah. that you're asking yeah. questions. This is wonderful. You got to know what it is. Yeah. See, it's not, see, it's not either or. It's what, when, why, and how. What Christian represents is that you have activated again. The Christ degree, the Christ degree is when you activate the pineal gland. There's different terms that are used actually for the same thing. But the people, because they're really not taught the truth, they think everything that's an action in your development is a separate or single religion because they were told that. Now, right now, you may not understand immediately, but that's not really how it works. Do you understand? And so, Chris. Christ or Christ actually comes from Krishna in Hindustan, ancient Hindustan, India. which today, yeah, that you call, that you call uh, India, which is not India, it's Hindustan. And in fact, the ancient name is Sinde and Pinde. All right? Now, a couple thousand years ago, the Moors renamed that area Hindustan. The Europeans, after colonial operations, call it India, but it's not India. It's Hindustan, all right? Yeah. Now, the philosophies or the development of the mind, the activation of your, what you call, they would refer to my spiritual glands. Madala, with Madala. With the Madala. Is that the base of your neck? You're going to Sanat? See? They may not. You may not. Have you had anatomy, biology yet? Mm -hmm. Let's go. You may get it. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Uh, yeah. We only get to that point yeah. Oh, well, you we will. Now, through the week, um, on Thursdays, they have Thirsty Thursdays here. You want to learn? So this is where you. We teach like here on talking, Thursdays at 6 You're talking different. Oh. You know, just like, for instance, if you have an issue and you want to talk about it and get a little bit of information, a little bit of what you call a moral and ethical support, come here. Okay. We're here every Thursday, except not next, not for the next two Thursdays. Yeah. Taking All over. Right. But after the first of the year, January 8th, we'll be back. And every Thursday, we're here from 6.30 to 8.30. And you're welcome to come and just ask questions or see what's going on and, and, and listen and learn. And, now, if you do come through, smile. Smile. If you, when you do come through, right? Bring a pencil and paper. Take notes. Ask questions. Ask questions. Ask questions. Then go back. Then you go to the internet. Go to the library. You go to the website, and then you go. That's what he was talking about. But in the meantime, since brother man, guys, whoever I put his name on your on your phone for search, was it you? Maybe. You. So you'll be able to, maybe some of the stuff might be over your head, but start listening to some of the, just to see, because it's very interesting. Now some of the stuff you might understand when you're getting into the law stuff and all that stuff, but some of it's going to make sense to you, some will make sense. Yeah, well listen a little bit and you might learn something when to start. Okay. So. All right. Uh oh, how are we going to do this? <laughs> Please, my brother. <laughs> you all be safe. You me? I want to see y'all. I want to see you brothers succeed. Okay? So come back. We'll be here next Thursday. Not next Thursday. We won't be back until the 8th.
disadvantage when they operate in the world, in the real world. And so what it does, it makes us uh, sort of like an economic chicken that everybody gets a bite. <laughs> it does, it really, it really does. Meaning that uh, people can come in any community where our people are and get wealthy like, almost like that. If they're not wealthy, they can have it like that. If, if you know, they don't have to get wealthy. They're, they're not going to be worrying about the next bill. They're establishing something. Right? And our people don't understand it because they, they're not aware of the codes of operations, of how these agencies work as government. The Clearfield Doctrine, well studied, would be your remedy in any, any, any argument. Okay. And it might seem like I'm... Um, just throwing it out there on the surface, but understand what I told you is absolutely true. Now, your capacity to intelligently use this for your defense in any financial argument, etc., right, um, would be based on you seeing through the fall, if you understand. You know, by our people being spooked up about stuff, they, they don't look at things correctly, and they make assumptions. This is to remove your assumptions, all right? 
Now, what occurred in, in Clearfield, Pennsylvania, there was a guy that worked for this, uh, uh, this company, and they sent him a check in the mail. Someone else interceded the check, cashed it, the check, and uh, was transferred to the bank uh, trust company. They cashed it, etc. And a period of time went by, long period of time went by until they found out that the uh, check was forged. Meanwhile, the check had um, gone through. All right. Now you're dealing with a, a, an issue of time period as to the claimant not making a claim, uh, which was sort of argued, but was not necessarily totally the point. Now what occurred is, by the representatives in government, the United States government, going after the trust company to get compensation uh, for the so-called for check, for ch uh, check, they exposed other issues that had absolutely nothing to do with that. And what it had to do with, if any of you any, know anything about jurisprudence, um, with, the, um, with the railroad case, um, that old case dealing with uh, um, uh, around 1938, they used a, a case in law to justify not acknowledging Supreme Court cases prior to 38. That way they could maintain their corruption in government. They made a case. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Meaning that if somebody came with a constitutional argument, right. they would act like you have no standing yeah, because they don't recognize no cases prior to 38. Right. But it's really because they're corrupted. Right, right. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah, yeah. What the Clearfield Doctrine is, their greed to go after this check, they expose themselves. Oh, uh, okay. All right? All right, now you hold this in your mind, because in a little couple of years, you're going to have to be dealing with this stuff. Maybe not. <laughs> uh, and not because you wouldn't have to deal with it, but because uh, the United States Corporation Company is being dismantled on the world market right now. So you, whatever you have to deal with, you're not going to have to be dealing with things as they are right now. That's a guarantee. You know, they're going to be rough for a minute, but like anything else, to clean, you know, baptism, you got to clean all dirt and you little be uncomfortable for a minute. like within a time period. You got to be prepared. Yeah, this is to prepare you. This information is to prepare you for the great and dreadful day that's already upon you. It's great for some, dreadful for others. It will give you some understanding. It means that things as they were are not going to be anymore. The corruption is being addressed on the world forum. Our people not being educated are usually the last ones to know what's going on. So we're kind of like calm, and there's a storm out there, which means it'll hit us harder if we're not prepared to handle it because we won't know how to handle it. Right. That's why you come to the to the house of reawakening minds. Think that's part of, of like them trying to kill us all. So. Oh that's well, that's the reason why. Right. That's but then you got to know that you're an heir. That's why they're trying to kill you all. Too. Right. But that's you got to know your history to know that too. So see how those things begin to collude, right. and see how. Even you come up with statements like that, right. but if you didn't know your airship, you wouldn't come up with that statement. Right. Do you all understand all what I'm saying? But well, we need that to be natural for each person. With, with him. Right. We're just like if we know, just like we were saying earlier, that two and two, that is natural. Do, do you understand? That is so that we can deal with other things, meaning that if we know that you know that two and two is four, that you can say your ABCs, if we're not, then we can talk about writing without you saying, well, let me see, A, B, um, C, D. See, if you're like that, then we, we got problems. If you're in a battle, and you are in a battle. So we're, we are dealing with the conflict of dealing with people who are under broad, faceted attacks. Most of them are not aware of. Other point. Ones who are making the attack are trying to cover up existing and past corruptions that they have to answer to that actually goes beyond you. 
but they've had things in place to kind of shield them from those repercussions. Their shield from you was your ignorance and your lack of defense. You have no method of defense. What they weren't counting on is that the rest of the world will in, were indirectly coming to your aid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. From an economic and political forum that's not being exposed to you. Do you understand? So the dismantlement is taking place whether you're conscious or not. Right. Problem, better that you be conscious to handle what you're getting ready to meet. Because before the cleanup takes place, it has to fall. Mm -hmm. And those who are not ready may not survive it. That's why it's called a great and a dreadful day. Do you understand? We're talking about the real politics of the world. But on the immediate tip, because you have to protect him, you have to protect your wife, you have to protect your family, your sisters, etc. And just like our little sons that were here, you know, really, they're, you know, yeah. But look at them, and they only got, you know, between three and five years, they're in the they're age of responsibility. Right. You know, I know they feel different things, but they don't know that they're targets. Right. I mean, no. really targets. We're not talking about them. They're really targets. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? And you don't want to put a burden on them. We're trying to, you know, hit them with that. But we got to start preparing them because this man ain't playing. And they're, because they're youth, they're, they're, you know, you're thinking, we think like this, oh, uh, youth get a break. No, yeah. to them they're expendable. Right. And the earlier they get them, the better. And they've right. got the, the new video I just have in the car, the prison, uh, the school to prison pipeline, yeah. elementary genocide. They're targeting them at early third age. grade, fourth grade, at a reading yeah. level and determining yeah. how many prisons, are, right. prisons right. they need. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And this is back even what the necessity of the Edamon degree. Because if we get that to them, um, uh, they have tools to work with. In other words, it, it will give them a tool to know how to find That's out bad. to know. That's unbelievable. Edamon is you, you unbelievable. You comprehend, mm -hmm. which is why they don't teach it. Right. But anyway, for the immediate, um, if you had um, an issue with mortgage, foreclosure, etc. Nine times out of ten, you know, uh, for those of you who've taken some information, I've done articles on the, um, on the, um, the rally when they were doing that sale in Philly, and it created a lot of problems for them. As a matter of fact, Green had to leave office early. <laughs> he was just talking about it too. <laughs> but, um, but the deal of it is, um, if you get certain concepts correct without emotion, you'll be able to act intelligently, smoothly, and with consciousness to help your family members, knowing that most of them are either spooked or hiding behind their beliefs, which will get them destroyed. So you gotta get this information to them without them thinking that you're attacking their mosque or church or synagogue, because if our, our people, this person, they, they hide, they don't use religion to really develop, they hide behind Islam. it. Islam. Islam, but brother. Uh -huh. They hide behind it. Now, so it's not, we're not going to knock that. Well, let's go over this a little bit and give you an idea. May I ask now, a question before you? Yeah, go ahead. This particular document, was a, this was a private citizen check, or was this a government? WPA. This is a case, a legal case. Okay, but based on a check that was. Um, I'm going to give you. Um, I'm going to give you a a. Um, I, I gave it to you before, but uh, um, here, this is yours. Keep it. Oh. Uh, All right, so, and it's within there. Okay. It's within there, and that'll give you some concept. So just just mark that out, right? And um. You know, like when we go to Tropicon sometimes, mm -hmm. that's in there. Oh, okay. Treaty of Rome is in there. Um, the Clearfield Doctrine, which is here, is in there. Oh, in the reverse? This is in the reversion, okay. And yes, all right. But that will give you concept. Um, and I'm sure that you can add 
with your analytical mind and put some supports within it and take pieces of it to instruct. Well, she's a great motivational speaker if you all. Do you all have an opportunity to listen to her on high frequency? No. Can no. you tell them the time? Uh, Just actually, real yeah. quick, real quick, please. Um, real Making It Lies is um, on high frequency radio every Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Real Awakening Lies. Yeah, um, on the Block Talk Radio, and you can call in the area code 424-222-5250, or you can log on to um, www.blogtalkradio slash high frequency radio. Yeah. Blog, talk. blog talk. B L O. I've heard. Yeah, but if you just if you, if you call in on Mondays, every Monday night, um, my show is on at 10 p.m. Eastern time. And if you call that number, you can listen just like you're listening to the radio. You can ask questions by pushing the button in the the engineer. Yeah, but it's high frequency. And this particular Monday, my guest is Jeremiah Kamara. It was the new movie out, Contradiction, a Question of Faith. He's my guest this week coming up. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, of course, you know you can get her DVDs and her CDs because she has produced a lot. And then she has other uh, metaphysical supports and spiritual supports here. And also on Thursdays, they have Thirsty Thursdays where you, where you can come here too. And also bring issues and because it's, it's, it's almost like open forum where you can bring her again. Where to find this stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, this is yeah. last minute tonight. Yeah, good. All right. Now, so let's talk about Clearfield Doctrine. Take notes. Now, the United States Supreme Court, so when you talk in Supreme Court, you already know that you're dealing with stare decisis. Right? You need to pull some those words. Oh, that's right. Stare decisis is when there's law is set. You look at stare decisis and res judicata. As synonymous. All right? Now, these are when cases come to the floor and are litigated and are set as standard and can't be refuted. That means the lower courts must recognize it no matter what other um, corporate state a case may be in. If, this, if, the, um, if the status or the nature of the case is relative, they must follow the standard. That's stare decisis, all right? And it's also called res judicata, the set, all right? That means you can't argue this one. It's, it's what it is. You know, like somebody, sometimes they might have a case and they want to litigate it and litigate it and yeah. argue it. When it's res judicata or stare decisis, if, it's, if the case is like that, hey, clear field. You, you, you can't get past it. You get the point? Right. Now, so Clearfield Trust versus United States 318, U.S. 363, 371, 1942. Pay attention to this because this is important to clear your concepts, right? Governments descend to the level of a mere private corporation and take on the characteristics of a mere private citizen where private corporate commercial paper, Federal Reserve notes, and securities checks is concerned. For purposes of suit, such corporations and individuals are regarded as entities entirely separate from government. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Are we clear? Yes, sir. Now, so what do you deduce out of that one paragraph? What comes to your mind? Uh, there's corporations, and then there's a such thing as, as government, right. and the two are completely different. Well, governments are, are corporate, right. but there's the status of the corporation that you must understand that must be distinguished. You're good. I'm glad you wrinkled your eyebrows. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's why we're talking to clear from the doctor to clear that up. You, you see, because because it's it's um it's indicative that there's a need to know, but you need to know that you need to know. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You know, like if people don't know something that's wrong, they don't recognize. 
that is some just so like someone come out down the highway and there's a big pothole and it ain't just going to bust your tire, it's going to break your axle. Oh, yeah. But if you're going fast, you can't avoid it, right? Mm -hmm. So this is in law your warning of the pothole. And those who hit it, they're just going to break the axle. <laughs> All right? Now, res. So write this down and stare called stare decisive. It decisives, but decisive. That's how I pronounce. All right? Now, and you're going to look up them so that you're already aware that this becomes part of your information base. Thank you, Dr. This becomes part of your information base, all right? Now, so clear field Trust versus United States 318, 363. Now, what I might do to be to be uh, uh, more fair with you is to maybe take it from my lesson book because actually this is in lesson book 14A1, which I haven't really published. I'm going to publish pretty soon because out of necessity. <laughs> Because it's going to save a lot. Because what we really need to do, we're we're caught in a situation where where we have to educate our people and and um, with difficulty, mm -hmm. take care of our own stuff at the same time, mm -hmm. and the people don't know that they're in trouble. You understand what I'm saying? They don't know how much trouble they're in. Right. Um, and um, we have the unfortunate. Um, circumstances that the European, knowing what's going on really on the world stage, are accelerating their, uh, what you would call, squandering or dissolution of the people's private estates, and they're not aware that that's what's taking place. They just think prejudice and, and abuse on the streets is increasing. You know, they're, they're, they're amping the game because they know you're waking up. Mm -hmm. and. On the other hand, they also know it's over for them. Do you understand? Right. And so, whereas our people have a tendency to be slow, but they get around to things, the European already logistically is nipping things in the bud. Mm -hmm. In other words, this is where the enforcement of the doctrine of discovery is being activated or more accentuated. This is part of the Constantinian uh, sacrifices on the street with young males. And if the people don't get the bodies, they're going to take their organs too. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? And then people march and pray, run around, and looking for trials and everything. If they really knew what was up, these people are not going to get convicted for these sacrifices. Mm -hmm. right. But you already know at the same time, you know, our people are dealing on emotions because they don't know the real politics, so they have expectations that are not going to happen. What needs to be is that their energy needs to be redirected to become more effective. What we need to do is we can't stop all the bloodshed, but we can limit it while things are being changed on the planet. Not to cut you off, but like you always say, uh, commentators speaking, that is what kills a lot of a lot of us. Yeah. The commentators understand it. It kills us that way because we think we understand something. So etymology, once you start to get into that and you really start to learn what words mean or you learn what different things are, it, it, it like you like you say, like you said a couple weeks ago, you can't read. And the phrase, the people are destroyed for lack of knowledge, is absolutely true. so true. Yeah, so true. But the problem that we have is that people have been uh, taking those statements um, and repeating them because everybody repeats them. <laughs> and, and really, and they, they don't associate and that it's actually projected their time. Mm -hmm. 
and that becomes, they don't know that they're the target. Mm. They're just it's just interesting information that they'll just take as a religious statement and sometimes underestimate the statement. Right. Not knowing it applies to them. Or think and, that, and or, so or think that the system like is that, bad. They have a tendency to get spooky. Uh, or they think the system oh, is bad. Right. You, you understand, because they've been damaged for so many generations by so-called religious orders that they don't trust yes. them. And so as soon as you talk religion, they get kind of um, squeamish. Right. And I Do you understand? Um, so the Clearfield Trust Company versus the United States Etc. It must be recognized that what the Clearfield Doctrine is saying and establishing in binding law is when, see, so, so that's what I was showing you is condensed, but it's more uh, editorial in the, in the lesson book. All right, so Clearfield, it must be recognized that what the Clearfield Doctrine is saying in establishing in binding law is when private commercial paper. Now, so what you must train your family to say and to do is that you must start calling things what they are, not what you believe that they are. The danger is if you keep using the phrases that they've presented for you, you actually create liabilities for yourself unbeknownst to yourself. So don't call it money. If you agree that it's money, you've accepted the liability and the interest that goes with it. Do you understand? This is what it is in law, Supreme Court. Federal Reserve notes are what? You all say it. See, y'all, you're too slow. See, I already know. No, I'm not picking on you. I'm just trying to express to you. You're going to have to be quick. You're going to have to observe, absorb this information and use it. Right. And I'm emphasizing this because you're going to need this already. Right. Forget soon. <laughs> All right. Like yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. you, you needed it like years ago, yeah. but you're going to need it more now because they're going to, they're already in the process of enforcing House Joint Resolution 2847. And that's a whole nother thing, but because we knowing that our people aren't really up on law and politics, I'm mentioning certain things that I'm not going to go into, but I'm trying to express to you the urgency without trying to rattle you. Do you understand? So please pay attention and please take notes and try to absorb the concept because a lot of people, it's, it's planned for a lot of people not to survive this thing in this next six months. Do you understand? All right. I mean, that's how far along it is. All right. So. It must be recognized that what the Clearfield Doctrine is saying in establishing and binding law is when private commercial paper is used by corporate government, then government loses its sovereignty status and becomes no different than any other mere private corporation. Get that in your head. This is the theme, and then I'll give you supports. Do you understand? So to make sure that you comprehend what's being said to you. Now, this is being said to you with the cognizance that you have already been exposed to how joint, joint resolution 192 and that you have a historical knowledge of the coup that took place in 1871, which I'll discuss in the book, but it's not necessarily on that first one that I gave you. And I want to try to get to the meat of it to give you um, a, a, a competent position of remedy, remedial law. All right. So as such, government then becomes bound by the rules and the laws that govern private corporations, which means that if they, government officials, government agency contractors, employees, or personnel intend to compel an individual to some specific performance based upon its corporate statutes, see, so when they're telling you that it's the law, this is, what they're, this is what they know that's going on, and you need to know it too. So when that policeman or some bank start talking about the law says, no, what they're telling you is their private corporate rules and pulling you into a private corporate, corporate rule that you have no benefit or part in, but they're implying to use public law authority to do it, which is a contradiction and 
is actually felonious. And this is what's been going on in our community forever. This is the basis upon which they've been gentrifying our communities. Or will they go, like, they'll come in the community and they'll say, sell our people a series of mortgages in, in a block of activity over a year or two. And then five, ten years later, come back and get all the buildings. Because it's set from a fraudulent base in the first place. This would be your remedy. In law, not in opinion. Do you understand? Yeah. All right. Now, we're not getting into the fact that it's already been t discharged when you, when you signed your name. It also was already foreclosed when you signed your name. It's another issue. So you need to know that. All right. That's why once you understand these things, that's why if people who stand up for themselves, the banks must be declared, those who are doing the banking must be declared fraudulent. That's why every case under MERS, et cetera, thrown out. You, that's because people finally started fighting back. Do you understand? But you need to know this for yourself because a lawyer ain't going to do it for you. Do you understand? Because they're part of the problem. Right, 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 right. All right, so you need to have this knowledge. So this is what makes it important for people like Dr. Nyla. Now you'll give him to do these kind of forums to make information available to you that you'll never get in another forum. They're not going to give it to you because it's not in their political interest, it's not in their economic interest. You understand? It doesn't mean that they don't like you personally. You understand? Now Europeans not going to tell you this because Susie ain't going to college if he tells you this. Yours ain't going, but his is. They're going because it's going to be at your expense. Right. It's not prejudice, it's the doctrine of discovery, it's what, how this thing's been running all the time. But they know that most of our people don't get into information like this, and therefore you'll never be rescued. All right? Go ahead. Um, in, in reading uh, Travis Dan's speech, um, I assumed that we were supposed to purge and correct that which was stated in, in, in the in the, in in his speech before the Congress, okay? Uh, yes, but look at it this way, too. Yeah, you're correct. But at the same time, when you read Trafficon's speech, you also have to have more knowledge to read between the lines, even though he's being blunt. He's still a, he's still a nice of Columbus. Yeah, yeah. You, he's yeah. trying to save his family. Mm -hmm. I mean, you already know it since we've been pushing this about the murder last yeah. month. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, um, you have to know that Trafficon is speaking, Islam says, with a knowledge of um, what was spoken on the floor in 32 and 34 with um, McFadden, right. with Lewis McFadden, right. Senator, yeah. right? Uh -huh. And that they bumped him off when he went to visit his daughter in, in mm -hmm. New York. Uh -huh. And then you have to know that's the, that's the same motive behind them killing uh, Lincoln and Kennedy mm -hmm. for trying to bring the gold back, the silver, silver back in, get back to the constitutional principles. So you, got, you have to have a background in history to really understand law because they go together. But you know and I know history and law has not been taught together, particularly to our people. So when you're talking to our people, you're trying to overcome their beliefs that blocks their minds, uh, their biases that talk with their belief systems, that compartmentalizes them. They, they have tunnel vision. They think God only made them, didn't make nobody else. So they have this sense of security that's not real. And meanwhile, they're being lighted upon by the European through all of his agencies, and they think that their government, they even think the Europeans are American. And mm -hmm. you've got all of this to overcome so they can be capable, even in law, to accept an estate. Let's more know they got one. Okay. Go ahead. I just want to read one sentence. It is an established fact that the United States federal government, now, so, so do I purge that? Do I say the United States? Uh, corporation, federal corporation, or I, I just got to... Now, that's, what, that's where you come in. Now, all right, you're correct. Now, look, you're right. Now, 
so you all can follow where she's coming from. You're supposed to be able to read instruments like that and edit them accordingly, just like what you just said. He's telling the blunt truth because he can't take it anymore. So like Martin did when he started saying, um, the night I'm not fearing any man. He, he was speaking masonically. Mm -hmm. Now people who don't know, don't know that he was speaking masonically. People who know, know that he was speaking masonically. Mm -hmm. Meaning that he already know that he'd been tagged. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So he was making what you would call a veiled exposure threat. In, in a way, do you understand? Yeah. It, it's sort of like he was having it. Yeah. Um, threatening the Don, I'm going to tell. <laughs> you know, lighten up on me, but at the same time, I got to maintain my integrity with the people. Do you understand? Yeah. See, so, you know, tonight I'm not fearing any man. That's to the order. <laughs> so he's saying, look, y'all, you know, the signals are out there. You know, because they always give you signals. Because everybody around was Mason. You understand what I'm saying to you? So, um, he said, but tonight, you know, longevity has its place. I love life. I love life. Don't longevity has its place. <laughs> Don't give me. You know, no, because he, already, cause, cause go, cause he already knows this is bigger than the average person even ever even thinks it is. This is with the knowledge that all of the corporate entities are a member of the Roman yes. Curia. Yes, yes. Now, so knowing that, you must also know the motu proprio that we talked about two years ago with the uh, Pope Francis, what that really is. See, so you all would have to have a knowledge of all of this in a basket, meaning that one reference is an, an other, even if it's not stated, you have to have the multiple eyes to see all of these things at one time and then collude and then filter out. And trying to get someone to comprehend this that don't know what the swell you're talking about. You, 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 and they don't know it involves them because they're not connected. They're mentally not connected to it, but it absolutely deals with their estate. And they don't know they're getting ready to be getting expunged. <laughs> Do you, it's like it's like this, you know. The, 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 the best way that I can put this is like the movies they always do where the woods, where they got this big beautiful house that's that's uh, aged, ain't been taken care of, but you can see it's a very wealthy estate. But ag eh, weeds is all vines is all, <laughs> and then you ride there. That's a beautiful building, you know, big beautiful gates and everything, but they fall over like this, and you know, and stuff like that, and you go. Hey, man, wait a minute, what's somebody up there? <laughs> oh, I could have swore I seen somebody move, right? And you go knock on the door, and the butler comes to the door. Oh, <laughs> uh, I see somebody up there. There's nobody up there. <laughs> you know, and they've been enjoying the wealth and the air they kept up in the attic. <laughs> that's really the air to the whole estate, and they're using the air and everything. Well, that's what's been happening to you. That's what all your abuses have been, what our people have been calling racism, prejudice, killing the young brothers on the street, breaking up our families, all of these so-called human services, institutions, and agencies to deal with our family problems, non-support, all of that is part of the genocide program under the doctrine of discovery. Our people don't know they're the heirs to the world's largest estate. They don't know that they're the Amorai. They think the Europeans the al -Marak. They think the European brought them to al right. when they are the heirs. And the European is Pregnus, which this is where you get the word pilgrim. Wandering stranger that's taken over your house. In other words, our people keep forgetting that they're colonists. They have a documented agenda of operations that they have been protecting and maintaining, this is where and why they have the secret societies so that the generations successively do not lose connection to the original function of colonial operations. Therefore, such knowledge must be kept from the masses. For they, it is their blind faith that actually feeds the institutions that are actually in place to destroy their families. 
But they're usually tagging with Jesus, God, Allah, and things like that. And so people don't suspect that they're spy centers. You understand? And then they think they have religion because they say the Quran, the Bible, and everything. And the masses never get religion. They get dogmata. It's like they don't get law, they get color law. They don't get money, they get fiat. And all of these things, they think they know. They don't know any of them. But he has controlled their language. And they believe in him. They even have him on the wall saying that he's Jesus. To psychologically destroy their own children have no idea that it is done by symboliographers for social engineering control. And after a few generations, they don't have to guard you anymore because you will become fratricidal or self-destructive. And, and for those who rise above it, they'll physically just take them out on the street, knowing there is no punishment. Not only that, they get five to 10,000 notes for the bodies. Yeah, especially, particularly Asiatic males, young males. Right. Uh, the organs are already, it's already, or, Meaning uh, this already set up. They're going to take the organs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They're going to take the organs. Yeah. So, but let, let's get back back past. So, the Clearfield Doctrine is expository because it can be used for remedy if you really understand it. And I'm, and I'm trying to present it so that the average person, if they have any so-called debt, quote-unquote, problem, um, they have the debt problem because they're convinced they have the debt problem, mm -hmm. but they really don't have the debt problem. And so it's a matter of courage mm -hmm. and knowledge of what's really going on because it is they themselves that are convinced that they have a debt. That is the burden that you must overcome, but you have to show them that they really don't have the debt. And you show them the law and they still are psychologically bound mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in their mind that they're in debt, and they're really not. Bill. I got to pay my bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all. I, I noticed, you know, just of the last maybe several, several months listening to uh, 143 in the morning as I get ready for work, there's always the same commercials over and over again. Two in particular, one deals with student loan debt, mm -hmm. and the other one deals with tax debt. Mm -hmm. um, they got Alan Thick or whatever his name, whether Robert yeah, thinks yeah, his yeah. father is the And they're going to give you a break. They're going to give you a break. Yeah. And it's like, you know, one thing, you know, tax laws are always changing except for the fact that you have to pay them. Yeah. Um, and they want your they want your money. Yeah. And they're willing to negotiate with you now more than ever. So it's like now you see all of these, these so-called bailouts where they have mm -hmm. these lawyers and professionals, they claim are separate private yeah. companies that are able to club. negotiate. And I'm saying it's just an arm of this same fraud yeah, <laughs> reaching out to people saying, well, we can't get you to pay it by conventional, regular, the regular way, uh -huh. then we're going to make you think, we, we'll take exactly. pennies on a dollar yeah. and get you to do it. Of what you never owed in right, the first place. These so called you know, companies that do business with us. Yeah. And it makes no sense. When you think of it logically, it's, it's, it yeah. makes no, absolutely no sense at all for me to just wholesale if you owe if you really owe me you owe. for me to pay you yeah. to convince me to, hit, to give it to you for pennies on the dollar. Word. No, I want my my, my everything you owe me. Now in law, that's called thirty part third party interlopers. So write that down. Third party interlopers. And understand third party interlopers can be dismissed in law in any case. That's another subject matter, but just for for you to know that. All right? And I don't care what it's about, whether it's a credit, whether it's a mortgage, or anything else like that. See, our, and also, this would be used. But let's go through this, and, let, and, and then whatever questions that come up, whatever questions that come up, mark some of them down, because okay. we're going to try to go through this. Okay. I want you to get the body of this, and then we'll talk, all right? Okay. Because it's the concept that I want you to recognize so that you can efficiently and competently use this information, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, so as such, government then becomes bound by the rules and laws that govern private corporations, right? Mm -hmm. Which means that if they, government officials, government agency contractors, and or personnel, et cetera, Intend, intend to compel an individual to some specific 
performance based upon its corporate statutes. So keep in mind, those are corporate statutes. And I'm going to bold this so that it be emphasized to you. Because these things you need to know. Wherever you see me emphasizing, understand that's deliberate to imprint on your mind that you need to know exactly what that means. All right, so if you know now that they're presenting to you corporate statutes or corporate rules, you know that they're not presenting to you law. They're dealing with you private Sears policy, private McDonald's privacy. It is a policy. It's no different than the guy coming from behind the counter in McDonald's, stopping at the Navy, Army Navy store, buying a badge and a blue suit, and they get organized with enough of them, come out on the street and start robbing people and tell you that they're law when they're really private for profit human traffickers that you thought ended with 1865 and it really didn't. Therefore, the actions and abuses that they commit against the people keeps confusing the people because the people keep thinking that they're law. You see the problem? Mm -hmm. So they keep on, oh, well, we got to make them know that we're somebody. Let's march and pray on it. They're operating from a conception that these people are law. They know that they're really simply private corporations fronting with people who have been miseducated. <laughs> Do you understand? In other words, colonialism has been institutionalized and the people haven't figured it out. And that's what's real. To keep it blunt, straight to you, that's what it is. Now, logically, for you to stand in law and speak for yourself, you must be purged of that mentality because your, your, your mental keeps giving them authority mm -hmm. that they don't have. Yes, yes. Because you don't know better. Do you understand? Then you always try to be a part of their club. I'm a U.S. citizen. <laughs> I should get a peanut butter sandwich and jelly too. You know, and, and then when they reject you, you go to march and pray. You could never be a part of them. You may never know. You're under colonial operations. They just got to pretend that they're Americans so they can use the power in your name. They're doing things in your name. And you're the heir. Don't know you're the heir. Anyway, so uh, so let me read through this because we can easily get, see how we can easily get one. Yeah. yeah. So, so as such government then becomes bound by the rules and laws that govern private corporations which means that if they, government officials and government agency contractors, employees or personnel, intend to compel an individual to some specific performance based upon its corporate statutes or upon corporate corporation rules, then the government, like any other private corporation, must be a holder in due course of a valid and verifiable contract or other evidentiary proof of a commercial agreement between it the government or agency, and the one individual or natural person, etc., upon whom the uh, demands for specific performance are made. Hmm. So what that means is that they must already prior and established and provable have a contract that they're bringing to court that they say you were bridged. Mm -hmm. They can't charge you with anything in a court without a contract. And if there's no contract, there's no charge. See? And so what they've been doing, they've been using loosely the power of government to make charges on people and fining people and tell them they owe this and that, and they don't have that authority. They're just simply making you corporate, private, corporate offers, hoping that you fall for it, being ignorant, and then start agreeing and paying and stuff like that. You, un you understand the nature of clean? <laughs> they tried that on me yesterday. Do you understand what I'm saying? They tried, they tried it on us yesterday. This is the reason why, when you really understand this, if you have tickets or something like that, within 72 hours before it goes on the stock market, you're rejecting the contract for fraud. And then you could also add Clearfield doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. And so you would do something like this. That, that 45. Yes. Yeah. Y'all got this, right? Yeah. Yes. Now, <clears throat> When you come to the house of we're waking minds, keep in mind, always bring pens and paper. That's my job. And when you put, yeah, yes. And when you bring other people, make sure that they're they're aware of that ahead of time. Because you come in here to get stuff, all right? 
And so we're going to do In red, very legible, not unlegible, very legible. You do it on a 45 degree angle on the instrument. You um, make copies of it so you can have it for your records. What does it say? I'm, I'm blind. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Refuse for fraud. Oh, yeah. No contract. Do not consent. Okay. Inducement to fraud, Clearfield doctrine. And you write that on an angle 45 degrees on a ticket or anything like that and send that back to them. But make sure you make copies for your records. And when you mail stuff, make sure that you get a physical stamp at the post office on the instrument. Or a notary? No. You don't have to do that. Okay. You know, but you can, you know. But you don't have to. Do they notarize when they sent to you? No. Mm -hmm. oh, right. wow. However, the deal with it is you, you make it for your records. Right, and what you want to do, you want to take, um, you want to copy both the, the the response letter, right, your response, your send back, and the envelope. Do you, do you understand? So you can have it for your records, right? And you um, mail that back to them within 72 hours, and in law they don't have any, they don't have a claim to proceed. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So you understand these things from the door, so you don't wait around, and don't be sitting figuring, trying to figure out, because you're supposed to know what's up. Yeah. Right. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Then you deal with the issues thereafter, right? So, now, because remember, whenever they send you something in the mail, they know they're not government. Mm -hmm. But they know anyone who they've educated doesn't know that. Right. That's their ace in the abuse. Mm -hmm. And they know you don't have to, that you're most likely not going to ask for the man of the contract or their business card, their EIN number their delegation of authority order, all with this, all together. You, you understand what I'm saying? You're going to be, oh, oh, well, see, my McDonald's job, well, see, last Thursday, I ate a chicken, and then they laid me off two weeks, and I, but I'm getting numb. You know, that's how most people start talking. They, they already know that here's the lending, uh, going to pay for Susie's college. Yeah. Well, it's true. You know, and then our people say, Dad, man, I went to court. And almost everybody there was brothers and sisters and Puerto Ricans. And then these Europeans, man, they walked, man, he had tickets like this long, but he had a lawyer, see. I can't afford a lawyer. When they really don't know whether he had a lawyer or not, they're going to walk. They got to just put on the show. And then you see brothers and sisters, you understand? They be hitting them with flying, bang, flying so hard that you think he ducked the Throw somebody through a brick. You know what I mean? Seriously. And then you see other ones. And you cross and stuff. With two tickets and a whole bunch of stuff. Clear for a doctor. 
They're taking advantage of people. They're really doing human trafficking. Mm. Wow. All right. So, um, and further, the government, and remember, this is assumptive, but people are assuming that they're government. When they're using that authority, they're claiming to be government. So they're also dealing with them being imposters or impersonators. Mm -hmm. So also think of that. And thus, they're trespassing, too. See, so you've got a lot of arguments to make. Anyway. And further, the government must be willing to enter the contract or commercial agreement into evidence before trying to get the court to enforce its demands, which are called statutes. Don't put, mm -hmm. don't put witches there. It makes it better. And so now, so you must know what a statute is, right? Right. It applies to corporations. Okay. So that's what a statute is? You, you, you need to know that it does apply to a natural living being. Now, you understand why they made the 14th Amendment? Because you would be a corpse. This is what the straw man is for, is a corpse. The 14th Amendment person. Right. All right. So keep that in mind. This is why they use that against our people. This is why they have, you know, People march around our community telling the people that they're black and people of color, and they'd be thinking that it means that there's some kind of membership or something good, and they really are listed as artificial persons. And so if a person is artificial, not like, not unlike a plant, like these plants right here, right? <laughs> yeah. Dr. Nile, Nile says, or water plants will get this in water, and then if you go over and start watering this, and she'll start saying, wait, uh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And the water running all over the floor and stuff like that. Because one, in law, that would be called color. Right. That means a simulacrum, a prima facie, as distinguished from that which is real. And our people think it's Afrocentric identity. See, we people of color, <laughs> you, you just told them you're an artificial person. Right. So do human rights apply to such persons? No. Because in law, you're required to know yourself. Right. Oh, now you see the danger right. of not knowing yourself. Is that why they have enough to ask questions three fifth? Human? Is exactly, because they have no name and nationality, right. so they're outside of the human family. Right. Because it's the honor of your mothers and fathers upon which, upon which the common law trumps the ens legis, or the Roman law and the uh, civil law. Right, right, right. I mean, this is why people have to know law and history, so they can put this stuff together, so it makes sense to you. you, you other than that, they'll think we're just giving them information, and it's interesting. See, so you... So uh, this is, again, why it's, it's very important to take notes, because you have to have reference points that I may not bring up at the moment. Right. And I wouldn't be able to bring all these things up anyway. You, you understand? Because most of the time, you're purging people who are different degrees. People have different levels of understanding. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Like, say, if I'm just dealing with um, a let, uh, an order in the Great Seal, I just simply go through this as a, an addendum. We might deal with some specific thing. But if you're dealing with people that don't have this information, you've got to kind of make sure that the different people have something from it, as opposed to just listening and, yeah, and you know they don't really understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Do, you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? And plus, it get bored if, after a while they're shut down if they're not connected to it. However, they don't know it's their lifeline. <laughs> you know? Anyway, so, um, the Clearfield Trust versus the United States case is extremely important because it is a 1942 case litigated after the Erie Railroad versus Tompkins case. Now, that's an important case you want to research because that's the case that they use to try to dismiss any claims that's in relationship to stare decisive. Of course, it's a fraudulent position they took, but that's what they, through their corruption, they've been maintaining via the world powers. And the Clearfield Doctrine, Tompkins. with Tompkins. their greed, actually overturned their own stuff. He said it was Lou Tompkins? Erie yes. yeah. See that? Erie Railroad versus Tompkins? Second line? I'm blind there. And see, that's that 1938 case in which legislatures and the judiciary changed. Pay attention to this, because this is very important for you to understand conceptually. 
So where the legislatures and the judiciary change from legislating under public law, get that? Mm -hmm. Which is in consonance with the American Constitution and to the contrary became foreign entities and actors doing foreign business and doing foreign activities and legislating under <coughs> public policy. You must know that distinction. You see how subtle that is? And if the average person don't know this, it just never forces their mind. And how our people keep getting rolled simply because they're not taught civics. So it, this, is, this will never come to their mind when some law firm is talking about some credit card or some school debt or some mortgage company in foreclosure. It will never even come on their mind because they're Already in their mind, these people got authority in their mind. It's already fixed. The government is going to take my sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? So as you get this, your whole frame of thoughts will change and recognize they're just simply an organized rogue order of thieves. <laughs> Impostering as government, not because I said so, because it's the fact. The fact that most people aren't aware is the problem because they need help and you can't help them if their head ain't correct because they will themselves will submit themselves to a jurisdiction that doesn't even exist. This is again why it's important for them to be nationalized because that's one of the keys by which the European claims contract. Because these people are transacting business in this name. When you try all these types of things, you not Joe Smith, it's, it's your state property. Right. That's why they did it. Right. See, you got that's why it's important for people to know law. The Europeans did what they did with motives. They weren't just like awful things to mess up history. Right. It makes such persons not descendable in law. I, I can't go in there as him. As Joe Smith, yeah. it's a Dred Scott issue. You walk in there, that's no different than you come in here, you, you come in here, you like dogs, right? Like dogs? Now come in here. Man, I'm gonna say your dog. Your dad got a couple hundred. Cause you know, usually we charge about seven for this is a pit bull, he's blue. He's nice, look at his bones and stuff like that, right? And uh, I'm gonna give it to you for three. Right? <laughs> My bicycle money and everything, I'm gonna get out, you know, whoa. Hey dad, man, you know, right now, you know, I'm gonna sell papers and do what I gotta do, but hook me up, cause man, we're gonna sell save 400, right? And then bring the dog over here. Yeah, and the dog go, meow. <laughs> <laughs> in law, that's the same thing when you walk in court and say you're black. Yeah. Or Joe Smith. You know and I know that even the most intelligent amongst our people, that usually doesn't cross their mind. You know, it doesn't even cross their mind because they don't know law and they don't know legal status because it's not part of the education base right. received by them. It, these kind, this kind of information is not dispensed in our communities. They don't know nothing about nationality. They think it's a religion. Right. Do you understand? Right. So they're going out into the world totally incompetent but confident in their ignorance. Boom! It only happens to us. <laughs> it only happens to us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be. Uh, Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the doctrine of discovery. Oh, they're racist. It's the doctrine of discovery. In their prejudice, it's the doctrine of discovery. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? It's birthright theft. And most of people think, oh, it's just the Moors know this stuff. Like, it, like we're separate from some other party, some different people. Third party, which makes them in law incompetent. Because what gives you standing in law is the honor of your mothers and your fathers. And if you don't know your bloodline, logically, it's not important to you. So you give up your birthright for a bowl of red pottage, for what you think you're going to get a break and you get screwed, then you want to accuse the world of racism. Race is the human species. And the human species is broken up to multiple families called nations and nationalities. 
And if you're not part of a nation state, you don't come under international law. Isn't that illogical? Can a child understand that? No. However, if that's not really logically presented to our people, they, they never it never dawns on them that they are out of order. They're just looking at the European as being out of order. He's simply taking advantage of them being out of order. Right. And not knowing themselves, not knowing how important it is. Most of the time when you talk to our people, they think it's just a a school of thought, philosophy of getting deep. <laughs> and, no, it's bigger than that. Much bigger. So I'm expressing that to express how important it is for the concepts to be instilled earlier than him. So it's, it's not a debate when they go out into the world. And all other information can be dealt with on its merit without them needing to be educated in basic civic ABCs, which should have been instilled from the third grade. So acknowledge our deficiency, be affirmatively strong and doing what is necessary to put those things in place without getting frustrated. Because like this, you can get frustrated and don't do it, and you're just simply food. So get over yourselves, start getting real. It's because of what it is, you know? It's like, you know, Santa Claus didn't really give you the bike with your grandmom and she's in debt. Right. So stop thanking Santa Claus and thank your grandmom and help her out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Santa Claus, you, you, you got my other bike. No, it wasn't Santa. <laughs> well, my cousin's going to sue him because he's been riding it for 10 years. He ain't got his bike yet. <laughs> no, you're not going to sue Santa Claus. <laughs> But they dressed up Macy's and Sears and gave all, all of them for Santa Claus. You can't sue Santa Claus, he's a fiction. I know that Santa Claus is real. Because I couldn't walk. And I prayed. And the next day I could walk. I know there's a God. And they start that kind of stuff with really, really not just, you know, now people have a tendency to roll like that. And it does not mean that they're not connected to the divine, their concepts are wrong. They hide behind beliefs. They don't really work them. But they don't recognize in the real world, the real world don't have mercy on them with it. Right, 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 right. right. They really don't. They just don't take advantage. Yeah. So, so now the focal point, um, so let me, I'll finish this. So this is the important part that you must understand. So the Clearfield Doctrine versus U.S case is extremely important because in 1942, in a 1942 case litigated after the Erie Railroad versus Tompkins 304 U.S. 64 1938 case in which the legislatures and the judiciary changed from legislating under public law which is in consonance with the American Constitution, and to the contrary became foreign entities and actors doing foreign business and doing foreign activities and legislating under public policy according to, accommodating to, generating profits for, and catering to the desires and wishes of the private foreign creditors of the U.S. corporation. Are we clear? Now, under these circumstances, the public servants abdicated their oaths and fiduciary duties to the public and with stark contrast and conflict of interest became voluntary servants and employees for the private foreign corporations. Mm -hmm. Thus, the Clearfield Doctrine was and is necessary as a legal and lawful argument and position to invoke to protect the public from the frauds committed by corrupted politicians and impersonators of government. So now, do you understand that? Now, so this is expanding on what that first paragraph actually poses to you. And if you don't know law, you know the average person won't be able to expand on it. So I'm expanding to give you a clearer concept, to also give you confidence in using it, because it's not opinion, this is law. You understand? So the focal point of remedial law, now remedial law means remedy. Do you understand that? Law that brings remedy? Yes. So that's remedial law, all right? So get familiar. 
in relationship to the Clearfield Doctrine is for one to be competent and capable to recognize and be able to distinguish the now private de facto for profit nature of the imposters from legitimate government. All right? Mm -hmm. So better said would be the imposters sitting in the seats of government distinguished from legitimate government. That would be better for you to understand. All right? So, these operatives are imposters of the now dissolved United States and the several states, departments, offices, and officers of the secretly subverted United States Republic. And the, and the reason I expanded on that is because when you hear a lot of the Europeans uh, talking about state sovereignty, yeah. remember this, and, 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 um, and you know, when you're looking at something, you can always modify it. There's another reason why, because when I look at it and I'm talking to people, I'm modifying, so I'm not finishing editing yet. Yeah. When they agreed to be the state of Delaware, and so the Delaware State Republic, they released their sovereign. See, see so it's not, see, in every state of, in every franchisee of the states that are part of the United States are collectively the United States Corporation Company. And they abrogated their fiduciary duties checked by the Constitution, therefore they gave up the sovereign power that goes with the seat. What they've been doing is maintaining the authority of the seat secretly while not possessing it whatsoever and actually working against it in order to rob the people or to maintain and to, to maintain organized, bureaucratized servitude, which is called slavery. Yeah, so that's how it goes from state to state to state. To state. A little loud and clear. That's how they go from state to state to state to state. Yes. Okay. And it was their, their collusion has caught up with them. Mm. That's what the Clearfield Doctrine is to you. And if you didn't know, if you had this information and no one explained it to you, you probably wouldn't recognize what I'm telling you. Wow. Unless somebody pointed it out to you, or if you were a, a scholar yourself and really knew how to examine things, and you had reference points, you could see what others don't see. But if a person doesn't have a background, they would not recognize it. They'd be interesting, but they would not they would not be empowered by the information. And what I'm trying to do is empower people with this information. So that when you leave that, you know, the House of Reawakening Minds, that you can actually use the information. Because it's not if you're gonna have to use it. I already know you're going to have to use it. Oh yeah. You may not know you have to use it at the moment, but I guarantee you if you will. No, I'm saying it's not. If when you want to you. <laughs> yes. All right? Now, so, so now that you know that the United States Republic was secretly subverted, so the, United, the legitimate United States Republic government was overthrown. See? Via, I'm going to put this here a coup, and the workings of unclean, hand, unclean hands.
was that? Yeah, 1871, a coup which took place in The reason I'm doing this, I'm, I'm going to make this clearer to you all. And I'm taking the time to edit this a little bit more because I really want you all to understand this. Because basically, when I did this, most of, most of the time I was using this information with people who are already uh, operative within the Order of the Great Seal. And so they already have a background. But because I'm preparing it, you know, preparing it for you all, I want you to really have a clear understanding. Because this will make it very clear to you because you need to be very clear about what's happening. And so the focal point of remedial law, that means remedy, law that brings remedy. In relationship to the Clearfield Doctrine, is for one to be competent and capable to recognize and be able to discover for profit nature of the imposters sitting in the seats of government distinguished from the legitimate government. These operatives are imposters of the now dissolved United States and of the several states departments, offices, and officers of the secretly subverted United States Republic. The legitimately United States Republic government was overthrown via a coup and the workings of unclean hands, a coup which took place in 1871. With deviancy, the de jure United States government, inclusive of those of the several state republics, were supplanted by a surreptitious organized criminal cabal of private foreign pretenders known as the anarchist U.S. democracy. Now you would look at the, the Trump Gant speech for backup on that, you see? Mm -hmm. So see the section related to Republic versus Democracy, United States War Department Training Manual of 1928. And I put that in there so that you would have reference point. You wouldn't have to do the researches in there. And so the, the U.S. democracy cabal members being the beneficiary parties to the coup are the de facto operatives administering the U.S. democracy government
that would be better. Because I really want you all to understand what this is, I'll give you cross reference. So the U.S. democracy cabal members, being the beneficiary parties of the coup, are the de facto operatives administering the, U the U.S. democracy government openly expressed, I'll put that as openly expressed. As openly expressed in House Joint, House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress in session 1933. See, so that's what they're coming out for. And they have been, however, fraudulently and unlawfully assuming the limited delegated authority and sovereignty vested only in the de jure former republics, departments, offices, and as officers who can only be sanctioned by the American Constitution via the United States Republic of North America. Review House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress, in session June 5th, 1933. See and read the following extract from HJR 192 for uh, conceptual clarification of the nature of one's proper application of the Clearfield Doctrine. And so I interject just those two paragraphs that Sister Delilo read so that you can have a better understanding. Now keep in mind this congressional records. So when you think that um, the politicians you know, that policemen and governors and mayors and leader guys don't know this information. Um, it's already, you already know. Just because people ain't been aware of it, don't you think they ain't aware of it? Because this is the congressional record. So that's, this is the, remember, congressional record is the, is the publishing document for all politicians coming from the legislature, from the Congress of the United States. So, when they act like they, they don't know, don't even buy it. <laughs> so as um, from the United States Congressional Record, March 17, 1993, and he exposed this on the floor. All right? So Mr. Speaker, we're, that's our James, our Speaker, our Representative James Trotkin, Jr., Representative of Ohio. Um, I'm going to remove this because it's not even necessary. So, Speaker James Trotkin, Jr., Representative of Ohio, addressing the House. Mr. Speaker, we are here now in Chapter 11. Members of Congress are official trustees presiding over the greatest reorganization of any bankrupt entity in world history the U.S. government. We are setting forth, hopefully, a blueprint for our future. There are some who say it's a coroner's report that will lead to our demise. It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March 9, 1933, 48 Statute 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent, House Joint Resolution 192, 73rd Congress, in session, June 5th, 1933, Joint Resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolved the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. The receivers of the United States bankruptcy are the international bankers via the United Nations, the, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. All United States offices, officials, and departments are now operating within a de facto status in name only 
under emergency war powers. With the uh, constitutional Republican form of government now dissolved, the receivers of the bankruptcy have adopted a new form of government for the United States. This new form of government is known as a democracy, being an established socialist communist order under a new governor for America. This act was sanctioned and established by transferring and or placing the office of the Secretary of Treasury to that of the Governor of the International Monetary Fund, Public Law 94-564, page 8, section HR 13955, reads in part, the U.S. Secretary of Treasury receives no compensation for representing the United States. And as you already know, most of the people aren't aware that the United States federal government was dissolved. And they're paying, who do you think that they paying taxes to? <laughs> people never even think about it, did they? This is congressional records. Now, they came out in 33, but it was established actually with the coup of 1871. And this is a coming out party. So you see there's a series of coups that actually took place that the average person is not even aware of. So they don't even, so when you talk to most of our people the way they would teach our children, they'd be saying, we, and we're, we want democracy for everybody. And they don't know that that's the coup. That's the overthrow. Though the Constitution guarantees a republic because that's what protects your rights. Now, do you understand the Clearfield Doctrine? The Clearfield Doctrine addresses this. That new form of government known as a democracy, which was what? The overthrow. The Constitutional Republic is the legitimate government. Thus, they converted secretly a legitimate structured government having a constitution into a private for profit sharecropping organization to enforce the secret treaty of Verona for the Popes of Rome the government was sold. Which means the people, the government was sold right from underneath the people's nose and the average person wasn't even sharp enough to catch it. And so all they had to do is continue to dumb the children down in school, and after a while, they start saying, our democracy, which means they sanction it. Of course, they didn't. And they don't intelligently. It's like, I agree to being robbed. <laughs> I agree now that we are slaves, organized. And we want democracy. That's a coup. Right. And if you don't see, so if somebody doesn't know history and law, they wouldn't even pick that up. Wouldn't even pick it up. They're not even aware of it. We're talking about educated people with degrees on the wall. Go ahead. No, Speak loud enough so we can see. Here. Now, as far as the European, right? Is that what the difference between them, Democratic and Republic, is? Like, the Republic is the power. The, the Republic is legitimate government, but don't confuse that the Republican Party is legitimate. No, they're I'm both not, part I'm of fraud. Saying, yes, saying, like, yes. Like, when going the democracy the order. Zero. The democracy is the fraud. Now, like, if you would look in um, in history, right. in some of the earlier school books, which you will not find now, they will tell you when they um, so-called uh, did the uh, so-called claim to end slavery in 1865. Mm -hmm that they instituted the Christian Black Codes as a substitute to deal with the problem of slavery. In other words, it was bureaucratized. Right. Wow. That makes so much sense. They, 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 and they, what do they tell you? They say, they just, in order to, to, insti to deal with the issue of slavery, the Black Codes were set forth, and they dismantled all the Republican forms of government in the southern states because of its relationship to the Negro. That's how they write it, but you know what they're saying. In other words, in order to maintain slavery, they had to dismantle the republic, because it can't be maintained in a republic. Right. Thus, the democracy that people got right now. 
Now you see the problem. Right, 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 right. <clears throat> now, logically, a teacher is not going to tell your children that in school. Okay. He said, we got a march, and you've got a lot of organizations that pray on it. And, 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 you know, and, and pretty soon, maybe one of these days, keep hope alive, they may really understand that we're people, too. We're somebody. <laughs> Black Lives Matter. Yeah, been dealing with the problem. They'll be fair. Right. With Jesse Jackson and you, I am. That's so what they're, they're, are, they're, that's their job. They're overseers. I, no. I am somebody. somebody. They're overseers. Their job is to keep the natives calm. Now, the youth are starting to figure out that something's wrong, yeah. Yeah. even though they don't have all this knowledge. Now, yeah. you see why they ran them out of Ferguson, yeah. Yeah. Jesse, and yeah. Al? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Snitches get stitches. Get back on your saddle. Yeah. That's what you hear. They, they're probably figuring it out. They don't have this knowledge, but they're tired of the pain. Right, 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 right. But they really need this, this knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. Specifically, because law is specific. Not, you can't operate on emotions. Right, right. It, it, it gets people hurt. And plus, it's not respected. You, you understand what I'm saying to you? Now, see, so somebody who really understands this is not going to get out on the street and march because they already know what their agenda is. Nothing <laughs> going out there. They're looking for organs. <laughs> and all people thinking, you know, I got to make them understand. See, they don't understand us, see, because we got melanin. We got to make them understand. They're looking at you as food. <laughs> see, like chicken's going out there, going to cuss with the wolves. We don't like church's chicken. You know, don't go into this argument. <laughs> yeah, we're going to march. We're going to get together. We're going to, yeah, go what we're going to do is march around the traps. <laughs> we don't want no chicken traps. <laughs> and we don't like KC either. <laughs> the wolf's going. We ain't caught on yet. Yeah. They're doing the discovery doctrine. These people are expendable. Hands up, don't shoot. We U.S. <laughs> citizens. We got rights. Yeah, well, how do you like it? Season. How do you like it? Season. <laughs> <laughs> and it's tragically funny. But it's, right, right, right. It's tragic. We but it's also tragic. indicative, shamefully addictive, indicative of our people's ignorance of what's really going on. But they're going to tell you about Jesus, God, and Allah. They don't even know what's going on in the real world that destroying their families. From these very people that promote these doctrines that don't believe it themselves. Because they're working for Rome. That's why you got to show them the treaty of, secret treaty of Rome. That's why that's also in the, in, in the book. See, because people, and it's sort of like this. People are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, but also because they don't know that their blind faith is the food for the vampire. Not faith, blind faith is food for the vampires. And that's what they're dealing with. Now, the fundamentals to begin to cure logically is nationalization. And that would be that would be transferred to this when it says, honor your mothers and your fathers that your days may be longer on the earth land which the Lord thy God has given thee. If you look at that statement, if you don't know what common law is and status is, Statement sounds interesting, but you would not necessarily take it real serious. You'd look at it, well, I just did that in the Church of the Mosque. But you wouldn't recognize that it, it really counts in the real world. Right. Exactly. Because you can't use the common law unless that. you are in honor. Another thing with us, we don't apply the world. We apply the United States to Right. That's, the, our, like that's there American, you go to tunnel vision. South there's American, the tunnel vision. North American. You see, there's the tunnel vision. They even think that the United States Corporation Company is a country. Right. right. They right. even think America is a country. Right. right. They don't even know America's two continents. Yeah. They don't even know third grade geography. Yes. And they, you'll, they'll argue with Would you, you if you're there? trying to get their head straight because they don't know. That that in law makes them incompetent. And you're Mr. Do you Lord, understand? All, all that type, all that emotion. That yeah. That type of emotion. And then they have leaders who promote it and feed on it, and they move with a confidence on their ignorance that's going to get them hurt. And but anyway, so back to what Delilah said. 
That's why what you just said is why I interjected these two paragraphs there. And actually, I just did it the other day at Toys. <laughs> I'll you, all right. Yeah, I mean, because uh, you know, when we're talking, when you're talking with someone, <coughs> their questions will cause you right, to right. look at what you you right. you've written right. and and recognize little subtleties, little tweaks. Right. That's why I keep tweaking it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and I'll leave this to you again too. Right. But <laughs> I'm just going to finish it up and just put the book out and stop messing around. Right, right. That's it. You know, because um, because people. <sighs> You know they need it, and I know they need it. Mm -hmm. But they need it more than than they know. Yes. Um, however, we gotta do what we gotta do. So as you can see, do you know why the United US Treasury, Secretary of Treasury, sees no compensation for representing the United States? Use your common sense. What was just read to you? Do you know why? The Secretary of the Treasury receives no comp compensation for representing the United States, which means he doesn't get paid. Right. Do you know why? No, I'm not clear why. Do you know why? All right. Pay attention. Now we're going to back up. See, because I'm doing this to clear your concepts. You've got to have clear concepts. In other words, you've got to be thinking for this stuff. Because if you're not thinking, you keep missing the point. All right. That's the last paragraph, right? Mm -hmm. The U.S. Secretary of Treasury received no compensation for representing the United States, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now read this paragraph again. Everybody read this paragraph together. It is an established fact that the United States federal government has been dissolved by the Emergency Banking Act, March the 9th, 1933. 48 Statute 1, Public Law 89-719, declared by President Roosevelt being bankrupt and insolvent, HJR 192, 73rd Congress, in session, June 5, 1933, joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause, dissolved the sovereign authority of the United States and the official capacities of all United States governmental offices, officers, and departments, and is further evidence that the United States federal government exists today in name only. Sure, they've been dissolved. That's why he doesn't get paid, because the United States doesn't exist. I was about to say, doesn't exist. But why, why did the rest of them get paid? But you should, you should have said that. I should have. I don't want to be wrong. Now, they're not really getting paid. They're getting gifts of Federal Reserve notes, which are private commercial paper that represents the resources and labors of their slaves. In other words, their vampires is put in mathematics of politics so you don't recognize it's vampirism, they're exploiting you. And it's right in your face, but the words that you don't understand confuses you because you're not looking at them correctly. So if if you know right now we're gonna get something we're gonna get something to, to fix something right at the house right going Lowe's or something like that or maybe Depot right so if I say Dr. Lila come on let's hurry up let's go catch channels and ripples before they close <laughs> what? What are they going? that's what you just said because they're gone <laughs> <laughs> so, so we could be riding all night you gotta keep on going to gas station because you ain't gonna find them. <laughs> Because they're extinct. <coughs> it's not that people ain't familiar with those names, right. but they're done. Do you, so yeah, therefore, was, would the secretary for Rickles be getting a check? I was no. thinking. I was no. thinking more no. of it. All right. You get now, a check. It, yeah, all right. So the United States and all its departments have been dissolved. Right. as operating in name only, which means they're fronting for the people. Right, but not only with them being dissolved. Does that also make it like would it be illegal for them to accept that? There's the Clearfield Doctrine. Right. I mean, no, it, no, it, it, it is illegal. It, it is illegal. All right. All right. There you but, go. But that's what I'm saying. If he received right. money for it, right? If he no, received money for it, right? Would it not only be money, not money, not money, commercial paper? Excuse me. Fiat. Fiat. It's now you see. Fiat. See how you're clearing up? Right. See, yeah. Now, now, see how you're correcting yourself? Right. right. See how she put you in check? Right. Until you can do that on your own smoothly. Without stuttering, you don't get it. I feel it. You got to get it. I feel it. You got to get it. 
and you can't be stuttering. Yeah, I agree. Love but as soon as you study, stutter, they you know you're you. incompetent. Yeah. Right. Then they're going to put a barrister on you from England mm -hmm. who's part of the problem, mm -hmm. and they're going to screw you after they drain whatever you got left, and you be going, how do they do that? This ain't fair. You feel it ain't fair, but you, you, almost, you don't know what's going on. Yeah. In other words, to be, to be informed is to be forewarned and to be given protection. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Now, but you must take responsibility for that protection. So you must honor your mothers and fathers in order to use the common law to trump their argument. Because the common law does not apply to people who are not in honor. See how the, the trap is, is set? This is why the Europeans put their family names on you. So it doesn't matter how intelligent you are. You transact business in their name, they got a contract. This is why these people are called what? Three-fifths persons. Mm -hmm. What's a three-fifth person? Mm -hmm. They have no name and no nationality. Mm -hmm. wow. wow. Which is the foundation of their right of claim. If you understand that, you understand the Dred Scott case. You understand the Amistad movie. It's, it's, it's your legal status. It, without that, nothing else counts in your argument. Now, is that back to honoring your mothers and your fathers? Because if you don't know your bloodline, it's not knowing it ain't good enough. You must declare it. You can't go out there and sell a pit bull that's a cat. Right. And then give it, how come they rejected me? <laughs> pit bull went meow. <laughs> well, he did it beautifully. He can sing, too. Well, they ain't got nothing to do with it. And we don't get it. You know, and then we start saying, I'm spiritual. <laughs> they, they're not interested in your beliefs. Exactly. You know, God, didn't, you ain't the only cookie in the box. We get this idea that we're the only cookie in the box. Just, baby. Just talk to them this morning. Well, give me a cell number. Well, I can't do that. Sure. You know, stop. You know, we, we really, you know, we need to kind of chill out, get ourselves together, learn to respect intelligence. And understand, running around talking about God does not constitute that you have a relationship with God. So, right. just like people talk about, I'm a surgeon. Oh yeah? <laughs> and they pull out rusty butter knives and don't lay on the table. <laughs> I don't care how well he says it, you know. Right. And we and we've been doing this for so many generations in our communities, hiding behind religion, not knowing that we were actually being irresponsible. I'm thinking that just because you say Allah, Jesus, Muhammad, Moses, that, oh, ooh, everybody gonna give you cookies now. <laughs> no, they're gonna take the ones you got and then not give you them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens. And we keep, how keeps happening to us? We ain't figured out the game yet. And talk about how we saved, they took all your stuff and your savings. Yeah. <laughs> saved. Oh, <right. laughs> That's what House going for Resolution 2847 is they taking everybody's bank account. You got some of the strong boxes, dumb. Mm -hmm. In retirement pensions, 30% as I speak, they're going to be about 80% maybe first part of February. And then some, they ain't going to be there at all. Wow. And then, when they go to get them, they're going to put them through so many regulations, it might take them a year and a half to get the first check from stuff that should have been issued just like that. I'm telling you what they're doing. So if you're forewarned, you do what you decide what you're going to do with the information. It's on you. You can't say that you weren't told. All right? So, um... Now, this is uh, what I want you to understand, all right? In relationship to the Clearfield Doctrine, and in, under, and in relationship to the coup, understand this. Classifications of corporations so that your concepts can be more correct. All right? Corporations are classified according to the definitions and rules as follows. Public and private, are we clear? And I want to make this more specific because people have a tendency to keep
keep acting like they don't get it. According to the established definitions and rules as follows public corporations and private corporations. All right. Observe the distinctions. A public corporation is one created by the state for political purposes and to act as an agency in the administration of civil government. Are we clear? All right. civil government generally within a particular territory or subdivision of a state and usually invested for that purpose with subordinate and local powers of legislation. Are we clear? Yes. Such public corporations may include a county, a city, a town, a borough, or a school district. Now, these public corporations are sometimes called political corporations. All right? These are legal terms that are absolutely applied to them, so get familiar with them so that you can keep it in your mind how to look at them and how to speak in relationship to these entities, to the persons doing business as these entities. So you must be familiar with what's dealing with you in order for you to deal with it when it comes at you through its workers. Do you understand? So these public corporations are sometimes called political corporations. And this is a law case get, as you reference here. Goodwin versus East Harford. I'm not going to read all them. So those are subdivisions or, or different cases that will give you reference points that you can look up to put your concept even clearer. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, private corporations. Private corporations are those corporations founded by and composed of private individuals and are deemed for private purposes, as distinguished from corporations founded for governmental purposes. Private corporations have no political or governmental franchises or duties. Are we clear? So all of your corporate entities and agencies are franchises of the local and federal legislatures. Thus, all of them are subject to the Clearfield Doctrine. Do you understand? Because mm -hmm. all of them have abrogated their obligations via the American Constitution, meaning that they have abridged the Constitution, they lost their authority. That's a, to put it simple, that's the best way to say it. When they abridged the Constitution, it was no different than Dr. Nyla, she hired me, that means I'm elected, if you're the people, to vacuum the floor. Every time you come in here, I'm eating up the food and everything, <laughs> floor dirty. 
You walk in and say, ah, what's that, a dog? No, that's the big mouse. <laughs> big one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she said, look. She said, Taji, look, come on, man. Come on, man. Be fair, man. I'll make sure you're taken care of. I'll feed you. You got a bed and everything. And living good and everything. Got a new suit and everything. And you ain't doing your job. Huh. Oh, you going to tell me how to do my job? I'm leaving. <laughs> so I walk out, right? But I come back next week. Oh, you sign my check? <laughs> and I've been coming in to sign my own check, taking checks, and I ain't, I quit. Now stuff all raggedy, I'm coming back. And I'm acting like, yeah, I'm the janitor here. No, you're not. You quit. This is what they did when they abrogated the gold clause. They literally quit their offices. And so their operations that they have been doing is in name only. They've been fronting. That's why the treasury don't get paid, because the office don't exist. Word. 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 Everybody's fronting. I need you to comprehend what you're being told. Word. You person it too? Exactly. <laughs> The offices have been transferred to the IMF. It's defunct. It's been extinguished in law. Bankruptcy is an extinguishing of an entity. So they can't ask for no money. I mean, for no uh, now, now do you for understand the clear doctrine? <laughs> they can't ask for money or any specific performance. They have no authority to do so. They're private. They're not public. Now you see why they're upset that people are nationalizing? Because yes. while they're using color law to enforce the law, the rest of the civilized nations are dumping them T-bonds as fast as they can because they're useless. But they got to honor them to keep the front up. But in doing so, the banks are going to go bust. Right. That's why they're robbing everybody. And so anybody who don't know what's going on, they're not preparing their families. You got an imposter government that's liquidating these people's estate. And they say, and the government, and you know, and I paid my taxes, and I paid my mortgages. You don't owe none of that stuff. It's being expunged. The problem that we have is that our people are still subject to them because they're not nationalized. Right, right. So they're their property under the 14th Amendment, registered right here in the state of Delaware as chattels. And they're on the stock market. That's the bondage. And now notice how I'm bringing to you two little points to kind of bring this together. Yeah. You know and I know that this conversation won't exactly roll with most people unless they have some kind of connection of what's really going on. They think you're trying to convert to them. Oh, no, oh, no. Do, you, do you understand? No. Oh, yeah, because I'm going to see I'm 5%. Yeah. I'm Hebrew national. Yeah. And I'm Baptist. And, you know, they, th and they think all this stuff is their refuge. It's not. It's the honor of your mothers and fathers because that's the only thing that's going to trump this. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to come out of this for a minute, and I'm going to go to law book, and I'm going to show you something. But you, again, just like this, you've got to read between the lines. Now think in your mind, honor your mothers and your fathers, right? right. And it doesn't mean just your immediate ones. Now, now look at this. Now, now watch this. Watch how poignant this is. But it's only poignant if you recognize what you're really reading. You see? Now, um, Right, this is my flash. So I'm going to put that down there for a minute. And
Now, Now pay attention to this very carefully, and this is again why we keep telling you study, take notes, because you, you've got to have a background to really comprehend this. And this is also what makes it difficult to get to the people, because you have to jump around so much to educate them to, so that what you're giving them makes sense. So this is also, we have a disadvantage that our people, have, their attention span is short, which logistically gives them power. Right. Look at this. Common law, they had custody. You know, like when you hear people and you see a lot of Europeans with the Freedmen's Group now trying to get the Republic back, etc., because the middle class is being dissolved, and that's what it is. But pay attention to this. Common law, as distinguished from the Roman law, notice that it says? Yes. That's what's been ruling you, the Roman law. Yes. The modern civil law and the canon law and other systems. The common law is that body of law and juristic theory which was originated, developed, and form formulated and is administered in England and has obtained amongst um, most of the states and persons or peoples of Anglo-Saxon stock. And then you would recognize the Renaissance where the Moors took the science to the Europeans. So you, you would recognize that they're taking credit However, that's your stuff. Right. You see? Now, so common law as distinguished from law created by the enactment of legislature. See the legislative public law, public policy. Right, right, right. You right. see? The common law composing that body of those principles and rules of action relating to the government and security of persons and property which derive their authority solely from usages and customs of immemorial antiquity. That's how the Roman law is trumped. And what happens if you don't know, what are they telling you? Immemorial antiquity, that means your ancient mothers and fathers. Your capacity to attach to the customs and traditions of your ancient mothers and fathers. And if you can't demonstrate that, then you can't trump the Roman law and the canon law, which is what's been ruling over you. Thus, the Christian black codes came right from the church. There's your Roman law. See why you must nationalize? And you must have a consciousness to demonstrate it because you're not going to get away with just making some red, black, and green flag and thinking that gives you some political jurisdiction and then talking about, yeah, because the black man of the melanin of hotel. And think that you. And they laughing at you all the time knowing that you don't know what the swell you're talking about. Right. See, so what that indicates is ignorant arrogance and egoism thinking that because you act Afrocentric that you're recognized? No, you're not. You better know what you're talking about. Now you understand why we teach people the treaty of peace and friendship which supersedes the Constitution to reconnect them to the political forum? And where Drawley says, help me in my mission to bring my people back into the constitutional fold of government, enforcing our Constitution of the United States of America. And what you see with this, they have abrogated the Constitution and therefore lost their operational authority to operate here, but the heirs are asleep because yep. they don't know their mores. Yep. So they have no protection. And then they keep thinking that they can be Afrocentric or accept Islam or Judaism, and all of a sudden that's going to give them some sovereign power. Not good enough. And on the surface, most people don't get it if you say that. They just think you're competing with them. Right. And, and they can't even, unless they are really taught this, which they're not going to get in them institutions, including their little schools of thought, their little blackie clubs, yeah. it's not going to happen. And, and, they, and they get a few, they go get two pyramids, and they, oh, they're really Afrocentric then. Go see two pyramids, oh, can't tell them nothing. Yeah. And they think that rescues them. It, doesn't. And they take on an Asiatic name, you know, they call them Muslim names. They gave up a sled name. <laughs> and we call him a sled name on die. So like in the but science, in the hood. The science took what they don't teach this. 
It's supposed to be taught. That's why Duraly set up schools. Every temple must have a school. Right. No, but, they don't. but that's what the COINTELPRO operations and the infiltration is all about. Do you understand? Wow. Why do you think we're here wow. in the house of reawakening minds wow. when we go travel around the country? Because it's the only way that people are going to get it. So therefore, we have to make personal sacrifices to get this work done. Why? Because it ain't about fiat. It's about the mission. It's humanitarian. Are you not teaching this in the temple? No. no. Maybe two temples. One in Canyon Land. In Asbury. In Asbury. That's about all I That's know. That's about one place we're going to get on. Um, maybe, maybe in a couple of places the room does discredit everybody, but right. for the most part, they did reverse churches on you. Right. They made it more like a And all you got to do is wrap the eye papers and you can kind of read between the lines too and you can see what happened because that was their strategy to knock down the national part of the movement but still maintain the orders so they would have to do less infiltration dealing with agencies. Oh, okay. And so that's why, you, that's why you're not getting it. But when, you, when, but when you read the divine warning by the prophet for the nations, it's absolutely indisputable that the foundation of his instruction is civic. Mm -hmm. you, you, can't, you cannot bring people into the constitutional fold of government without them studying constitutional law. Mm -hmm. right, 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 right. They can't take their places amongst the affairs of men unless they understand international law. And he says, he says, he says, in order to be recognized by the nations of the earth, well, how are you going to be recognized by the nations of the earth when you don't know, know international law? And how are you going to protect an estate when you don't even know a state? He says, what? Your lost estate? He talks about your lost estate. Mm -hmm. And then you tell these people about trust law and estate. Yeah, the prophet didn't say that. Uh huh? Do you understand? Do you, well, we don't even need to go there. Let's not waste our conversation with that. Just recognize what you're getting. Right. And why are you getting it? You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And the unfortunate thing is that not only should every one of these seats be full, they should be standing around. Yeah. And the pain that's getting ready to hit them, they're going to wish they had this. Because those who are not prepared are going to be what? Expended. Because it's expended. It's, they're liquidating. Just like, for instance, right now, all right, you bring your baby here. Well, he's, he's our baby because, you know, he's right. Yeah, he's right. But he needs this information because he's going to grow into this paradigm totally un, no defense whatsoever. Right. Paying taxes, which is his, really his labor, thinking that he's compensating the government to help his family and stuff, and it's being split between the bankers and the Jesuits. Even the 1040, the 1080, 1040 of the people right, signed, 40% right. goes to the Queen of England. Right. The other 60% goes to the Jesuits. Okay. How many are people every April filling up them papers talking about I paid my taxes and actually think it goes to the schools for the children? Right. We're talking about adults and not a penny goes back to them. Right. And then they wonder why they're broke in debt. Right. School's closing. Say it again? Mm. It's closing all the schools. But yeah. they're paying taxes. You know why? Because, they, that, because they're converting the prisons into mm. FEMA camps. Because that's where they're going to send their babies. Mm. So they're preparing them from the schools that are left. Because see, this is what it is. They're not, ex they're not expending what you call any, what you call extenuating finances, which means they're, they're contracting. So everything, what happens when, like say if you're shopping and, and you have less fiat to exchange for services when you go out into the world for your family, and like say you have three cars, right? Right, you might park one or two of them so you don't have to pick or uh, compensate for the insurance anymore. And um, whereas you used to buy ice cream and take chips and cookies, it may be just vegetables and those things that are not necessary come off the list. Now, go back to the issue of the 39 schools they closed in Philadelphia, the sixth largest city. And all of them, the ones they closed, are in Asiatic neighborhoods. Why? Because those are expendables. 
Now, not that those children were being educated properly anyway, but they, there's no need to front anymore because now the strain is so great that uh, we don't need to fake no program no more. You just, wow. Hey, don't even, it ain't even an issue. Now the people sit around all loose, and that's schools and the schools. It didn't matter because all they was was babysitting clubs. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they were preparing them for the jails yeah. anyway. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. if the parents were really in their right mind, uh, it's a burden, but they'd be thankful. Right. Start homeschooling them right. to get them out of the hands of that European. Right. But instead, they're looking for another one to send their children to these priests. They raped the children. Yeah. They got their, their, their birth certificates on the stock market. They're all uh, with the um, General Education Board, write that down, General Education Board 1902, Rockefeller. They're dumbing their children down. And we worried about them closing the schools that never did us any good. <laughs> what they should be doing is talk about, don't get no more tax from men. How about that? But anyway, so I wanted to bring the common law in to show you how to look at the common law, take this in consideration uh, in relationship to the play field also, all right? Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people say, well, huh, I'm using the common law. You know, just like you see a lot of your opinions, because the common law represents the capacity of one to enforce constitutional principle. They say, how do you change it? You go into a court, which they're actually uh, human trafficking venues. How do you change a court to a common law venue? And they just say that often, they start talking about methodologies, and don't think about the status <laughs> determines your capacity to use it. Nobody's saying that. I'm saying it so you could, if you look between the lines, you can see it. Because it's attached solely, the authority comes solely from the ancient customs and traditions of archaic in the moral antiquity. That means you gotta trace it back to your bloodline. And there ain't no such thing as black people. Do you see the whole point? And then our people not knowing these things get all emotional and pissed, and they're out of order. And then you tell them nationalized day, yeah, but I go to the church, you know. They don't <laughs> understand what's really up here. Yeah, I can't be Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want to do the mosque, man. I ain't saying I make some Yeah, y'all yeah, 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 ain't real Muslim. Yeah, you see? Exactly. That's <laughs> the birth right. <laughs> And that's the real question. Uh, one time I went to Walmart and I demonstrated my card and the sister said, oh, what is this? I like this. Maybe I can get one of this. I said, yeah, I have a nationality. I said, what's your nationality? Oh, I'm a Baptist. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> Your nationality. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Baptist. I'm a Baptist. And, she, and she repeated that. I said, no, no cool. you got to have a nationality. She said, oh, no, I'm a Baptist. I'm a no. Baptist. And you're going to go no further than that, you exactly. know? Now, that's, that's called consent. Yes. In law, yes. that's consent. That's it. But I guarantee you she probably contributes to the NACP to try to fix the problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Thinking that color yeah. means a people and it means artificial. But again, now let me show you this. Take advantage of the same time. Uh, 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 again, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Uh, and this is for your little brother, too. Now look at this. Now we're going to go to color, and then we're going to go to color word, right? Now keep in mind, and this is also why we, you know, try to make sure that that our people start investing in themselves and still buying 200 note sneaks, buy 50 note sneaks, and then get some books, restore books. You need your law books, etc. Color, color. Now you know what our people think it means people of color and stuff like that, which we're going to go to color to show you what it really is in law and then show you again why people from Africa, uh, Asia, when they come to North America and they start making economic progress real quick, 
and then our people thinking that they dissing us, they disrespect us. Oh, yeah. You will understand why once you read this, because yeah. we're going around using these brands and putting them on a civilized world and wondering why we're rejected or treat, treated as less than. Right. Here's color. Keep this in mind. Right? Color and appearance, a semblance or simulacrum as distinguished from that which is real. A prima facie or apparent right, hence a deceptive appearance, a plausible assumed exterior concealing a lack of reality, a disguise or pretext. Do we need to go further? All right, now let's go to color. Color, right? Now notice they're not saying identity, say in term, right? Mm -hmm. Pay attention to this and teach your friends too. And if you can talk some of them up into it, bring them here next time. Color, by common usage in America, this term in such phrases as quote unquote colored persons, quote unquote the colored race, quote unquote, colored men and the like is used to designate Negroes or persons of the African race, including all persons of mixed blood descended from Negro ancestry. Then give you law case. But where a state constitution provided for separate schools for the white and colored races, the term white race was held to be limited to the Caucasian race and the term colored races to embrace all other races. It has also been held that there is no legal, technical signification to the phrase, quote unquote, colored person, that the courts are bound, which the courts are bound judicially to know, which means they don't even need to recognize it. Because it's, it doesn't exist. It's, there's no scientific, technical signification to the term. It's a brand. Right. And our people say, we people of color, and they don't even have to recognize you. And then everybody says, double standard law. No, they accept you for what you claim. It's a legal status. The sooner you understand that, the sooner you correct somebody when they call you people of color, they just go with your birthright. But if you can't read, you will know that. Now you can read. See why we have to teach our children to read? Yeah. Because what they think things mean is not what they mean. And don't come with no Ebonics argument. Sure. See how dangerous it is not to be national? But if someone doesn't get this information, they can't recognize the value because they're looking at it just on the surface. Like, oh, this, that club, this club, what I belong to, they're looking at the club. It's their bloodline, their economic and political lifeline. And this is where the irresponsible have misrepresented the Moorish movement in instructing the people. Do you understand? Because this must be known by every woman and child, because every man, woman, and child must confess their own and worship under their own vine and free tree. Failure to do so is dangerous because you come under the color codes. You see the point? Right. And our people think it's Afrocentricity. And we'll argue that it is. <laughs> and the rest of the world knows that this is what it is. Yeah. You see the problem? And I'll show you one more thing, and I know you're getting a little bored, but just to uh, hold it together for a few. You know what I mean? Let me show you something. You might get a little bored. That's, that's how they used to have us in church when we was little. You <laughs> <laughs> still picked up something. Trust. Yeah. He's just tired, though. He's not bored. Oh, I can understand. Now,
Now, so you know about the moment's brief? You ever heard about the moment's brief? The moment's brief takes place in Philadelphia. It will take place around January, what they call the New Year. It is a mockery parade, actually. Mum means mum the word. Philadelphia is where they stole our people's birthright. And that's why they have the moment's parade there. And they assemble officially at 6 and more Street mm -hmm. and go west and turn 90 degrees on Broad Street past the old battleground, which City Hall is designed just like a mosque on that battleground. And then they have the cornerstone, not outside the building, but in an open grave pit. And in the dark north, they got statues on the pillars of them holding up the pillars, pillars of Atlas, Morocco. Then the Masonic Lodge is right outside as you come out of the north with a parapet. It was like a mosque with Willie Penn, Billy Penn standing on it. Mm -hmm. And that's where the Mummers Parade ends. They make the judgment. It's symbolic of the fall of Morris. Right. All right. Now, and that's when, like in 1854 to 1863, the Europeans took on from the Whig Moor Party, they just put on wigs to imitate the Moors. That's what the Whig Moor Party is. Okay. That's why you see the Europeans wear those curly wigs when they deal with jurisprudence. Right. What you're dealing now with jurisprudence. You understand? Right. And they became the White Party, and this is when they started calling themselves white people. And so officially, around 1870, loosely, affirmatively setting it in place between 1854 63, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Chicago, Illinois, Knights of Columbus, Ku Klux Klan, over. All right? Now, here's what free white people is in law. You know that when you go amongst your friends and everything, they be calling white people and black people thinking it's identity, don't they? Now, our people don't know that they're white people. They think that they're black people, don't they? Now, let me show you what everybody else knows in law. All right? I want you to read this. Is that free white persons? It's a legal status. Referred to in a Naturalization Act as amended by Act July 14, 1870, was, uh, has meaning naturally given to it when first used in one statute, 103C3, meaning all persons belonging to the European races, then commonly counted as white and their descendants, including such descendants in other countries to which they had immigrated. Free white persons includes all European Jews more or less intermixed with peoples of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Latin, Greek, and Slavic descent. So as you can see right there, they can't even be free white persons if they're not even, if they're not mixed. They can't even be free white people. Mm. Now, free white persons includes Magyars, Lops, and Finns, and the Basque and Albanians. Free white persons includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal. The mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenician, and North African inhabitants of Sicily, and the mixed Slav and the Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. Free white persons does not mean Caucasian race, does not mean Aryan race, nor Indo-European races, nor the mixed Indo-European Dravidian, Semitic, and Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. A Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become a naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person, and then you have multiplicity of law. As you can see, it's a legal status. Moors are white people. Phoenicians and North Africans are white people. Right. Their passports would have that, but they wouldn't show it to you when they come here because they know that we get all serious. Oh, you trying not to be black, no. huh? And you trying to be like white, man, like everybody else, because they are. <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. And our people are so dumbed down they actually think it's a complexion. Yeah. So it would not be incorrect to put on an application. Mr. It would be absolutely correct. Free white person. It, 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 it's absolutely correct. Right. So if you know your nationality, you know this. If you don't know nationality, you wouldn't know this because this information wouldn't be exposed to you. Just like anything else, you don't give people administrative information who don't administrate. 
In personal health to servitude, they have a class of information for them. There's a caste here. Whether people believe it or not, you know, go argue with them. Nobody's going to sit around and come here all, you know, from some other country or some islands and start schooling these people. Because as soon as our people start telling these people they ain't black, they start saying, oh, you trying to be white, man. You like that white man down the street coming here disrespecting the brother in our neighborhood. Got a store in our neighborhood. No, you bought a house out there in the suburbs next to the white man here in the black community with your brother. So they, we're going to march and close your stuff down. Because he is a white man. But they know it's almost useless to try to explain it to our people. Because the first thing they're going to say, I don't know, you can't hear me so lot. Yeah, yeah. You don't believe in Jesus, no. yeah. And they start that stuff all judgmental. So the civilized world is not going to sit here and do the, because it's going to require a, a re-education. Right. Number one, they're not going to sit there and deal with the attitude that we got. <laughs> Let's be real. Because we, we've been put upon, and we feel like we've been put upon, and anytime somebody don't agree with us, we get an attitude, and they know we can fight. <laughs> if, they, if they don't fight, they got a nine. Yeah. And they roll like that. Everybody, everybody knows it, so we're dangerous, not only to each other, but to others, just because we don't know the truth of birthright. Therefore, we have no value connection to anything. We don't even value our own lives. So most of the young youth don't even, they don't even live like they're going to get past 30. Because they don't see, they don't see nothing. Right. They're just trying to survive. Because the parents have abandoned them. They, they have their, all they see is death, jail, and suffering, and they're talking about, just pray. Yeah. You know, and they, they know that stuff ain't never worked, and they love their parents, but they don't, they're confused. But they also know that it, it ain't nothing out here for them. And then what do they do? Then the European what plots things and plans their only survival that guarantees they're going to be dead or in jail. And it continues the eugenics program that they don't even know that's going on. You see the point? So therefore, they must be re-educated. They must be re-educated. And it can't be with emotions. It must be with facts. Therefore, nationality and birthright it deals with knowledge, does not deal with beliefs, does not deal with emotionalism. It's dangerous for our people not to have this information. And, but the problem is, most of them, their attention span is not long enough to get it. Which means they've, they've been sacrificed. If not immediately, it's coming. Well, like uh, when we come to these venues or whatever the case may be, when we have the chance to be able to nationalize. Yeah, but that's why you, you're given a foundation. See, once you're given a foundation, you're self-motivated, you will start doing those things necessary, everything will become obvious. Yeah. Because everything's available to you. It's just that you got, no one can step for you. Right. See, remember this, when it says a statement, every man, woman, and child must confess their own. That means it's, somebody else can't do it for you. And don't talk about, well, well, I don't understand. For children, even children. Because if they're in them codes, they're expendable. Do you understand? If you kind of really understand this thing, you can understand Executive Order 11490, King Alfred, Rex 84 plan. Mm -hmm. And it's based on what? Second World War, uh, with some other people man. who were claiming to be somebody they're not. They heard about a nationality, didn't they? But they had to kill a few million. Because they're taking up space. And they're drawing on the economy with no allegiance. Do you understand what I'm saying? And now, and that was study, that was the study for King Alfred, which is applied to our people now. You know, and let me let me let me give you a little bit of something. Because we're talking military documents. We're talking about documents and stuff. We're not talking mere opinion. Now, this is the military plan. King Alfred, executive order, right? Mm -hmm. 
provided for by Executive Order 11490, October 19, 1969. This Executive Order was authorized October of 1969 to counteract the minority, blacks, Indians, Latinos, Puerto Ricans, and poor whites, and their rise from up under the depression and powers that be, the government, King Alfred. In the event of widespread and continuing and coordinated racial disturbances in the United States, King Alfred, at the discretion of the president, is to be put into action immediately. Now keep in mind, this is a military document. Ain't got nothing to do with what people believe, does it? But I want to show you something else that these marching crane, so-called black leaders, <laughs> keep avoiding telling people is also why you must nationalize. You see where it says here? This booklet contains vital excerpts from Executive Order 11490, October 19, 1969, King Alpha Plan, the Rex 84 Plan, Concentration Camps, Executive Order 11490 expanded, Top Secret, Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars, Introductory Programming Manual, Operations Research, Technical Manual, TM SW 7905.1 ETC, United States of America Incorporated. The Executive Order number 11490. The Rex 84 plan and silent weapons for quiet wars has been in the hands of the popularly accepted individuals calling themselves black leaders since the early 1970s. Many have spoken of them, but few have logistically broken them down and disseminated the information to their alluring public. The King Albert plan implicates the true motive and reasons why they do not. One will take note that all the people mentioned in these document plans, blacks, Indians, Latinos, poor, uh, Puerto Ricans, and poor whites, do not include a de jure national name or title. All these words are descriptive chattel brands coined by Europeans as substitute pedigree parentage names and were forced as appellations on the indigenous people of the Americas and their own discards. All people bearing these labels are referred to as it in these texts. Mm -hmm. One common thread is evident. No nationality equals no rights and no human value. Mm -hmm. Are any of these states assigned black leaders speaking of or educating their people in recourse, redress, remedy, or sovereignty? Do they instruct or do they not? That is the question. Now, Let's go into the military plan. I'm going to skip a little bit and bring you to some substantive parts so that um, those are concentration camps, y'all. Those are locations. Exotic map. But I want to. Um, this is the part I want to read. These are regencies, regions where they divide the country up into sections. But I'm going to read this particular part to you to make it very apparent to you that when people talk about King Alfred, they always avoid this part, particularly if they still tell these people that they're black. Silent Weapons Executive Order 11490, infiltrated organizations under surveillance. One, black Muslims. Two, Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Yeah. Three, Congress of Racial Equality. Four, Uhuru Movement. Uh, group on Advanced Leadership, Goal. Freedom Now Party. United Black Nationalists of America. The Pan African Movement. National Urban League. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, <laughs> Committee on Racial and Religious Progress. All these are infiltrated. What year of course, was so is the temples. Everything is infiltrated. What year was this is military documents. I'm saying, what year was this? 1969? Of 1969. This is when right. they issued it openly, <clears throat> but it was already since 1942. It has been prepared right. since the Second World War. Yeah. It, but it, it, it was actually, it was leaned, uh, leaned from some uh, government computers that were supposed to be wiped clean. And it was gleaned from one of the computers when they sell airplane parts and a lot of government surplus. They cleaned the computers, but some people know how to hack hard drives. And this was, 
And the guy who did this was European actually. Um, he's in solitary confinement still. Mm -hmm. Anyway, because his military is top secret stuff, the ones for the ones for the public. All right, note, at the appropriate time, pay attention to school, brother, so you can pay attention to what's up. At the appropriate time to be designated by the president, the leaders of some of these organizations are to be detained only when it is clear that they cannot prevent the emergency. Working with local public officials during the first critical hours, all other leaders are to be detained at once. Compiled list of minority leaders have been readied at the National Data Computer Center. It is necessary to use the minority leaders designated by the president in much the same manner in which we use minority members who are agents with central and federal, and we cannot, until there is no alternative, reveal King Alfred in all his aspects. Minority members of Congress will be unseated at once. Hmm. This move is not without precedent, precedence um, in American history. Attorney General, now pay attention to this because this is really important because it's a military document, but it reveals a lot. And it also shows you why a lot of the so-called black leaders who always talk about the black diaspora always overlook this part because it would show, prove that they are agents with federal and central, helping in the miseducation of their own people. Yeah. Primary memo, Department of Defense. This memo is being submitted in lieu of a full report from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That report is now in preparation. There will be many cities where the minority will be able to put into the street a superior number of people with a desperate and dangerous will. Mm. Pay attention to this line. He will be a formidable enemy for he is bound to the continent by heritage. Mm. Keyword. I'm going to repeat. He will be a formidable enemy for he is bound to the continent by heritage and knows that political asylum would not be available to him in other countries. The greatest concentration of the minority is in the deep south, the eastern seaboard, the Great Lakes region, and the west coast. So our people are not bound to this country. They're bound to the continent, and they have been convinced that they came from some place else. And the key word? Yes, go ahead. Key word was heritage. Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Their heritage, inheritance, is this continent. Right. Now you understand why they keep building jails? Right. Yeah, because they can't take us. Because they can't else. deport <laughs> us. And guess what? North America ain't India, and we ain't Indians. <laughs> and we done bought into all the BS and been what? Misled even by our so called black diaspora leader guys. And for those who don't know real history, believe them and have been mentally disconnected. And this is why the youth have no direction. They're not connected to anything. You understand? So they don't have any value and all they get is mistreatment. So when they see things being cleaned up, they're right on them with no conscience because they don't have any connection to anything. Right. And then people use that as an excuse to hurt them. They don't even value each other because they're, they're suffering what you call cognitive dissonance and disassociation. And they're traumatized, and yet there's no healing. This is the healing. But the knowledge is the healing. Don't even know. Don't even know. Because that's what, but it doesn't stop the damage. Do you? It doesn't stop the damage. You see? Let me go in a little part here. And um, show you something else that um, give you something to think about. But but it's it's um it's to let you know, um, for the most part, whereas our people think that people aren't aware that this is social engineering. You know, we be trying to figure it out. We talking racism, and it's a military plan. We're under attack. In the war, really. They they've got a manual that they're carrying out and we're sitting around thinking attitude. See, we got to make them like the black man. Because yeah. we got melanin. 
and other chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're full. We're full of it, man. And it's, and it's a pitiful shame because our leaders are doing this to us. Yeah. And if you give our people this information or try to teach them etymology, you have brothers out there what they call trolls who are paid off to criticize what we yeah. teach people like it's yeah. not important. Yeah. But a, a person who doesn't have an education might fall for it, but a person who has a knowledge won't fall for it. So what they're doing is sacrificing their own, and they get paid off for it. It's called the overseers. You see the ones where they mentioned with working with uh, central and federal? Yeah. Now people don't know that. But they have this information. That's why they took that workers' glory. Exactly. Yeah. Those are concentration camps that you see right there, y'all. Now, let's look at this part right here. <clears throat> I, I'm going to read this um, part right here. Security. It is patently impossible to discuss social engineering or the automation of a society, i.e. the engineering of social automation systems, silent weapons, on a national or worldwide scale without implying extensive objectives of social control and destruction of human life, i.e. slavery and genocide. Remember, this is a military document. Mm -hmm. This manual is in itself, is in itself an analog declaration of intent. Such a writing must be secured from public scrutiny Otherwise, it might be recognized as a technically formal declaration of domestic war. Furthermore, whenever any person or group of persons in a position of great power and without the full knowledge and consent of the public uses such knowledge and methodology for economic conquest, it must be understood that a state of domestic warfare exists between said person or group of persons and the public. Remember public and private, public law, see, all right? The solution of today's problems requires an approach which is ruthlessly candid, with no agonizing over religious, moral, or cultural values. You have qualified for this project because of your ability to look at human society with cold objectivity, and yet analyze and discuss your observations and conclusions with others of similar intellectual capacity without a loss of discretion, or humility, such virtues are in your own interest, best interest, do not deviate from them. This publication marks the 25th anniversary of the Third World War, called the Quiet War, being conducted using subjective biological warfare fought with silent weapons. This book contains an introductory description of this war, its strategies, and its weaponry, May 1979, Number 74-1120. So as you can see, the Ebola, the AIDS and everything are actually war tools. Right. That's the silent weapon. And the vaccines they give your children when they go to schools. Right. Now, and what are they admitting to in the military document that ain't supposed to be public? Is that they are consciously exercising slavery and genocide and its institutional lives. Do you understand? against these people who are what aboriginal and indigenous to the land and don't even know it. Good. Also, like what you're saying, like it's not just they use the word and they said the world. So they're just they're not just attacking the indigenous aboriginal people here in America, the but world. also the whole planet. The whole world. Africa, Asia, Southeast Asia. Anybody that's, that's, that's non-European, they attack it. All right, now, isn't that their admission? Yeah, they admit it, it right says their, an intent. Yeah. Right, in other words, this is a manual by which they guide their operations in the corporate states, etc. that our people have been calling wrongfully prejudice. See, so if you're not dealing with what's really going on, you have yeah. no defense. 
This is why they get frustrated because they are looking at this morally and these people are not taking no religious or moral things into consideration. They're straight out working on elimination. And we see they got to understand the black man's melanin of hotel. <laughs> Yeah, but we love the children. Please stop. We need to stop being hypocrites. What do you think, Brian? Um, like if sometimes Moors go in these venues where where these uh, magi are, these ministers are, and they try to get into the subject matter as opposed to keeping it in their personum jurisdiction. Because yeah. um, I heard the other day, you know. I can travel the land. I have the right to travel the land, you know, and I don't need a driver's license and all that stuff. And that's subject matter as yeah. opposed to status. Because status, you know, they, if they don't answer the status with their delegation of authority, then everything is objection, yeah. objection, objection. You know, you don't, you don't get no further than that. You know, you can't go no further than, you know, no. who are you in this situation that, we're, that you're telling me that I, I'm obligated to um, deal with? Anything else is objection, objection, right. objection. You start arguing, you, you mm -hmm. contract yourself. Well, argue the case because you're going against subject matter. You're supposed to set status for them. Okay. If status is not set, there's nothing for them to discuss, for them to dismiss. Meanwhile, you only set it in in a little call schedule for the time that you're there. Or are you talking uh, uh, peanut butter? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the clock is rolling, you want the clock. And you introduce yeah. that with, your, with, with all your documents, too. All right. So as you can see, the point that I'm that I'm uh, presenting to you is that there's a lot of support information, even though they've suppressed and eliminated a lot of stuff, that anybody could understand the necessity of nationalization. But if they're not given the background, they don't rec they'll never recognize the value, which means they're being sacrificed, and they don't know it. They don't even know it. Do you, you understand what I'm saying to you? So now think of all of this when you think of the Clearfield Doctrine and the necessity for you to use it, but in your proper person. Because you're going to have to use this information to have standing at law because they are liquidating. And persons that are 14th Amendment are already considered corpse, corporation. See, that's the corp corpse person, the ends legis, the straw man. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the straw man is for. Dead people. And corpse, more, everything. That's why it's called dead. person. You, you, I mean, all these subtleties, oh, one has to know law to recognize how it's applied so that after you settle down with it, that you can get out of the emotions of it and deal with it intellectually. Because if you get emotional, you make mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you just got to accept the fact that they're waging war and you get over it. Whatever you might have thought you thought, get over it and start getting real. You understand? All right. I'm going to show you something else, too. Energy. That's political introduction, then energy. In 1954, it was well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time, only a few decades before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power. This means y'all become that's what that's that's saying whether you, that you're gonna get conscious. It means that they know that in due time information will be available to you right. and you'll get conscious. Right. So In 1954, it was well recognized by those in positions of authority that it was only a matter of time that a few, only a few decades before the general public would be able to grasp and upset the cradle of power for the very elements of the new silent weapon technology were as accessible for a public utopia as they were for providing a private utopia. See the property property again? In other words, they they already had computer systems that you were yet to become aware that existed. Right. Which is what you're doing now. Right. <laughs> and they were plotting ahead of time. Ahead of time. Oh, yeah. 
All right. Now, the issue of primary concern, that of dominance, revolves around the subject of the energy science. Energy. Energy is recognized as the key to all activity on Earth. Mm -hmm. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Natural science is the study of the sources and control of natural energy, and social science theoretically expressed as economics is the study of the sources and control of social energy. Both are bookkeeping systems, mathematics. Therefore, mathematics is the primary energy science, and the bookkeeper can be king if the public can be kept ignorant of the methodology of the bookkeeping. Now, do you understand why private commercial paper that's given to these people, they're trained like rats to call it money, mm -hmm. and when they call it money, it creates a liability because it isn't money, and you already can be found as fraud before you go any further. Because you're held to what you say. Right. Right. And there, there you go. They're robbing you because you've never been paid your sharecropping, your labor. You think you've been paid, so you're inspired to work harder, and you ain't being paid. You're actually in debt. Now, go back to House Doing Resolution 192, and then the Clearfield Doctor put this all together. You see the, do you see the correlation? And yet, if you didn't have a background, you probably never put this together. So we're putting it together for you. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying to you? So that you can operate with no doubt that all these leader guys already know this information. So if they're not talking birthright, you already know that they're agents with what? Federal and Central, what they're just telling you right here. I was just thinking of TV1. And they never, I said the other day, they never talk about national Of course not. Never. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they come down with BET, we you know BET, mm -hmm. but the TV1 is supposed to be the new one. Europeans own BET. Exactly. And they own TV1, they own all of it. Well, well, but they're not talking about. Of course, and they announce. You would not expect it if you understand what's going on, would you? Exactly. You would say it's immoral, it's not ethical. But you wouldn't be surprised. Right. Uh, if right. you're surprised, it's only because you don't know what's going on. It's like you're going, you know, you're going to the casino, all people going to see them, yeah, because we believe we're going to the Baptist casino. <laughs> Everybody always broke. One of these days. Yeah. You know, but yeah. after a while, yeah. if, if what point you don't get it that the deck is stacked against you? What what point you don't get it? You need somebody to keep telling you? It's a door on you. And we don't. We do the same thing over and over again, look for a different result, which is a sign of insanity. Yes. All right? So anyway, so this is King Alfred, but I want you to look at the Clearfield Doctrine, understanding first that all politicians, all mayors, all police chiefs, and all of their subordinate operatives that are, that are highwaymen, and your so-called black leaders and politicians all know this information. This is again why they get arrogant when you become conscious and start standing for your rights. They get mad to try to intimidate you because you're coming out of the system that's formulated for you, like crabs getting out of the basket. Throw you back in there. What you trying to do? You, 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 you understand? Don't confuse that or their anger or their resistance with you being wrong. You're only wrong if you're dealing with the black paradigm. But in your proper person as a national, know that you're right and that you actually have standing in law. Whereas in the black paradigm, you don't have no standing in law I'm talking that stuff. That's an insurrection. They kill you right on the street. Yeah. Yeah. It's what's happening in Ferguson yeah. and in New York. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? There's no recourse. You understand? Anyway, so for the most part, I hope that we've done some good. You've taken some notes? All right.
<laughs> and we're going to go over this again. And um, next time we come, I'm going to, I'm going to have these two books ready for you all. Oh, you understand? All right. Um, again. Ninth, the ninth? Huh? The ninth of January. Oh, soon, soon. Did I get that depressing? No. That's, that's when the next uh, class is. Yeah. All right. So anyway, so don't forget you all, Thursday Thursdays are here. So you'll still be having a venue to bring your issues, because it's almost like an open forum, and then there's a lot of spiritual uh, uh, sharing. She has other other stuff that's very important relative to stones, those who know who are because we because real spirituality includes mm -hmm. the metaphysics, going right. back to the principles of our ancient forefathers. Right. So when you come here, you're really going to get it. You really are. And she really has a lot of stuff here for you. Okay. And don't forget her, her book um, that you hear the brothers read from sometimes on high frequency. Um, the musings of an undercover writer. I don't see one. Okay. <laughs> That's this book here. She's got another one coming up. This is a good bedside reading. Also a good gift. Oh, perfect gift. <laughs> for your for your wife. For your, for okay, I was just thinking it. It is a perfect, it is beautiful. It is a perfect book. I don't know why you always come when we're leaving. <laughs> I mean, that's all right. I'm, I'm just coming to say Islam. You I'm know, saying Islam too. Blame $5 and stuff. I support your cause. I'm saying Islam. Like, I'm just scouting. So, I'm just scouting. Anyway, so I, I trust that we've done some good. Um, we'll be expanding. We'll be expanding on this. If you have some questions, formulate, formulate your questions for, for later. And um, trust that we'll be able to satisfy them. I hope it sparked some questions in you mm -hmm. that weren't asked immediately. Mm -hmm. But understand, once you understand the real, that's to let you know what the real, see that's the deal is, is to let you know what the real politics are. So that you don't get emotional when you're out and you see certain things take place. Other people sitting around with their eyebrows wrinkled because they don't understand the unfairness, the imbalance. Now you know what's going on. You don't need to keep doing that. What you need to do is start using your intelligence and your divine senses to begin to help in the great missionary work of helping to uplift the fall of humanity, starting with yourself and your family members. Now you have reference points to make sense to them. Because if you don't have real reference points, they just think that you're trying to sell them a belief. And each time as you start to recite things and talk about things, it becomes clear. Each yes. time it does start to connect. With yes, you. yes. I mean, from the different classes and, you know. But you know, the other greater interesting thing, as you can see, as you can see, I'm giving you documents so that you can see that persons in power and government and leader guides, this information is already available to them. So when they pretend that they don't know about this stuff, understand it's because you caught them and they're going to play dumb, but you know that they're not dumb. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yes, sir. And know that they are deliberately and consciously taking advantage of you and your people. Now you understand why the magistrates claim to be judges and are arrogant with our people. Yeah. And you'd be wondering, why are you disrespecting the brother? You, you see where they're operating from. Because yeah. it ain't really yeah. attitude. They're operating, now you understand why the, the police, private police, are militarizing all around the country. Right. It's King Alfred. Did you hear about the, the young lady that was killed what, last week or something? Was it last week? And, um, Houston.